All right, I think I'm ready, more or less. Damn, that was a rush. I completely forgot I was streaming with 10 minutes to go. <laughs> that was kind of a, a little bit rushed. I did have to actually restart the stream as well, so if you wonder why you got disconnected, that's why. Um, because the, the stream title was wrong, and it screws up the videos if I don't. <clears throat> um, is my microphone actually on? Yeah, it is on. Okay, good. <clears throat> Okay, let me say hello to everybody. Um, hey, Prince Faze, Andy Magic Knight, Mr. G, Steps, Amok, uh, Proud7, C64 Mark, welcome, Fittrend, Furoy, oh my god, Andy, you're a raffle addict. Akmafin, hey. I think I've got most people there. This is SP175. Welcome, Mythical Duck. Welcome. Uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm gonna have to ban the ban the raffles. No, nah, I wouldn't do that. Uh, Retro Steve. Welcome, Ducks to Me. Welcome. Uh... Eldritch seventy nine, welcome. I think that's everybody, but I'm I'm struggling to kind of. I think yeah, that is everybody. Cool. I think anyway. Where the stream gone? Oh, don't say that. Oh yeah, the I had to I had to stop and restart the stream. So. You're if you if you were. <laughs> You weren't too busy doing uh, raffles. You'd notice that the stream had, had gone. <laughs> okay, so I've got uh, a nice red wine tonight. Uh, Rioja. It's one of my favourite Riocas, actually, this. Um, it's becoming more and well, well known. It's quite a... It's quite a well-known one. It's kind of a decent price, I guess, considering... Um, not too expensive. This isn't a reserve though. This is just a normal one. But they do a they do a reserve as well. So let's get this. Um, Acmefin tonight's Acmefin wine. Espiritu de Chile. Okay, okay. So leave that open. Smells good. Doesn't smell corked or anything. Yeah, it's fine. So I'll just leave that there to breathe. I'm just going to get rid of the bits on the edge of this so it doesn't fall into the glass when I pour it. The whole thing. There we go. Oh, God. Can you put this on? And imagine I just getting it out of the way, right? And in the meantime, I'm going to drink these copper bags. I did order four, but they didn't have. <laughs> they didn't have some of them, so. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it on. I'm gonna force you all to listen to it. You can all pay for Andy's mistake. <laughs> no, no, it's Andy's fault. You can blame Andy. Thanks for the host, by the way, Andy. Appreciate it, dude. <clears throat> Yeah, I actually do have the power to just put this on constantly if I wanted to. I have the power. Okay, so what I wanted to do tonight, um, what's going on here with this window? They've changed this window for some reason. Uh, thanks for the resub, uh, Retro Steve. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, and welcome along. Yeah, there's something weird going on with my uh, my channel uh manager uh i'm not sure what's going on there all right i i'm just gonna i'm not gonna worry about that i'll i'll check that out later just pause it and it doesn't get in the way okay let's start the races as well so what i wanted to do tonight was start looking at loading the map data in um in xmized format um so i've been doing uh, i did a little bit this afternoon just to 
um, to update the editor so that I can export the maps that you guys give me in a in a um, format that's good for um, in an optimized format that that, we, that we're going to use. So I'm going to start by just importing uh, a couple of maps just to make sure. Uh, well, I'll just import one map and we'll try and get it to load in XMI. So, oh yeah, what was this one? Can't remember what it was. Seems like there's a large delay between the chat and the video. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, you could could try just refreshing again. I might it might might fix it, but um, I don't know. Uh, my five G is on full. Um, I've not got any drop frames, and I haven't changed any settings since last time. So it could just be a local connection thing or a routing thing to Amok. All right, cool. So um, let's load up the editor. I'm just going to load one map in uh, and export it. And then when we've done um, the XMI's kind of levels, I'll put maybe four or five levels in there. Um, they've changed a few things in Twitch. I've noticed uh, my my kind of stream manager panels all different, uh, but, but in subtle ways. Like the the spacing of things is off, and the uh, the order of order of fields is wrong in certain places. So I don't know what they've done um, or why they've even done it, but there is something. Have they changed the chat font? Uh, I can't tell because I don't have the normal chat window. Hang on, uh, let me just try. Oh yeah, it does look at the, yeah. I'm not sure what they've done, but it is slightly different. There's something slightly off about it, and I can't put my finger on it. I think it is the font. I think you're right because all the all the follow channels down the side look weird as well. Strange. It's only a very minor change, whatever they've done, anyway. Okay. So the um, you guys don't need this update of the editor. It doesn't change anything about the day. It just changes the export. which I want to do manually anyway myself because I want to test everything. So let's just take a level here. Oh, it's got some black pieces all over the background, so I'm not sure what that's about. So first thing we need to do is we need to remove these black pieces. So they shouldn't be there. What was this one called? Falling heart, there we go. All right, let's start by testing it, just make sure it's a completable level first. It doesn't match on the sides. Oh yeah, it doesn't, does it? Okay, so that's gonna need fixing. Okay, that's yeah, that's one place we're gonna have to fix. Wow, this is actually quite a difficult level. Oh, you fucker. This is what I wanted though. I wanted levels that weren't just straightforward. God damn, this is not an easy level. Uh, 
Oh yeah, because they yeah. So these platforms need adjusting because I'm getting stuck there, and I shouldn't really. Um. So let's let's fix these platforms. I'm I'm going to fix it just by lowering this one down because there is a pipe here already. So um. And it's not like you can jump up there, so I'm just going to lower this platform down. So this bit here, uh, remember how to do this now. Was it shift? Uh, okay, it wasn't that. I thought it. I thought it was. Oh, I remember now. Damn it. There we go. So you hold down shift, and then you can drag pieces around. There we go. Uh, okay, let's let's just export this level. So I'm going to save this again. I'm going to have to go back through my message to figure out who's done all these levels because I'm not entirely sure. Hey, Yaroslavus, welcome, dude. Python rules, okay. Nah. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I, I kind of like the the use of these here. This this kind of pattern that's been made. I think that's kind of nice. I wouldn't have thought of doing that. So it's nice that somebody has done that. I don't know who made this level, so. <laughs> I'd have to go back through my uh, my messages and figure out who's done it. Uh, but I, I, kinda, I like the design of it, and I like the difficulty of it as well. It is quite tricky. Okay, so if I export this level uh, and put it into our game, which is actually on desktop, not in that. So let's make a game. Let's overwrite that one there because I don't think we need that for anything. So in compressed assets, compressed map one dot bin. Okay, and just want to confirm that that is compressed. So uh, if we go have a look at it, it's one hundred and sixty two bytes. So yeah, it's definitely compressed. We know it's compressed because the screen is twenty across, um, and. 11 high which means it's 220 bytes just for the tiles so that's definitely a compressed file uh, we can confirm it even more as well by by dropping it into a hex editor and we can see that there is no kind of uh no obvious pattern for kind of blank space and stuff so so yeah this looks very much like a um compressed file Does it matter that the three blocks you move down are light blue? Uh, oh, that's just because of the um, that's because of the selection block. It's fine. Oh, well, I see what you mean there. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap here, isn't there? Is, or, or, is that what you meant, or? I'm going to I'm going to tidy them up anyway to make them match so uh I don't know if I can do that with the bits that are here but I might have to I might have to change some of the colors I oh, know it has to be that on that side okay but then here it can be there you go just to match that side properly uh it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this uh this test, but I'm just going to make sure I save anything that I think of like that as I go through it. Okay, so now we've got a map. So let's let's start opening up some windows in here. So as I say, this this map data kind of has to remain here, and it's just virtual anyway. Uh, and what this is doing is it's um, it's reserving all of these labels um uh hang on yeah it's reserving all these labels so that um we can address all of this properly at a later date really doesn't matter what's being put into this location it's going to be overwritten anyway this is where this is the same area 
but now this has data that's that's loaded in right at the beginning. Again, this, I, I mean, I don't really even need to import this thing. In fact, I'm going to get rid of that there because uh, this is the bit that's important here. Um, and these are the compressed levels. So at the moment, this is not compressed. These are just two levels that we've pulled in. But let's start, let's replace them with compressed levels. So assets compressed at one dot bin. I don't know what that is there. Uh, hang on. What is that? Oh, I guess that's just, I guess that's another, uh, uh, probably manually compressed something at some point. That's fine. Bit of Monty Python. Uh, okay, so compressed map1.bin. All right. I don't really care about level two, but I just, in fact, let's, let's load another level in and do the same. So we've got two levels. Okay, let's load Cement Factory. Okay, so I think we needed to do some small changes in here. Um, actually, there's too many changes to make in there, so I'm going to do I'm going to do another one. There we go. Uh, cool. I'm not sh I'm not sure about those white pipes, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna remove them for now. This looks fine. It looks like you can complete the level uh, and there's not that many things in it. So this is kind of perfect. Okay, so let's export this level. Uh, hey, Hayes. Welcome, dude. Uh, I'm just trying to work out what my maths is going on here. Yeah, you know, I was talking about that the other day. I was talking about how um, the the world is building a huge online library of you know things like Stack Overflow and and GitHub and stuff. Huge online library of code of all sorts of kind of things. It's not a huge leap to believe that an AI could use all of that tr as a training for um, uh, you know a, a machine learning kind of. Uh, training and and be able to write code based on very very simple English statements and write very complex code. In fact, I think there are there are things that do some of that already, but um, it's probably not that far off being able to do kind of very complex stuff. You got that one, Hayes. Well done, Hayes. Shadow Warriors. I always wanted to play that. I never did actually play it. I might have to get that at some point. It was one of those I did want to play, but never got around to doing it. Let's just call this one map2.bin, and I just want to go and have a look what size that is as well. So, yeah, 169. So, they're, they're quite small, these levels, which is kind of all right. So, let's work out what that would be, actually, in terms of memory. So, our levels go from 8680 to B800. So let's. So B800. Oops. Minus 8600. And divide that by A9. Gives us 75 levels at that size. That's pretty good. Wow. That's pretty good. OpenAI DBT3 can already create websites and maybe even small programs from text descriptions. Really doesn't surprise me. Really doesn't surprise me at all. Oh, it's shit. Okay. <laughs> it was just one of the, it was one of those, one of those games that I, um, I remember seeing, I think it was, was it, no, I think it was an arcade game or I saw it on another platform. Uh, and I kept thinking I want to play that and then I saw it come out on um, C64 and I always wanted to play it so it's not great but it's a royal masterpiece compared to the C64 okay did we get the freebie shillings? no we didn't actually let me do that oh god you guys are all shilling addicts
<laughs> yeah, so at this kind of compression level, um, as long as these maps actually load properly, which I hope they do, um, then we're looking at uh, 75 levels, which is not an insignificant number of levels. I feel perfectly happy to kind of uh, put 40 or 50 levels into this game. So 75 would make me very happy. Um, and we've still got still got a bit of room for stuff uh, at the high end of the, 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 the second page, uh, second uh, quarter bank memory. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about this. Feeling pretty good about this. I mean, the only thing really that's going to be any significant amount of code now is going to be the intro uh, and the intro text. And I've I've saved a bit more room for intro text here, so still got a little bit more room for that. Um, yeah, it's fine. Okay. So now we've got two compressed levels in here. Now, the thing is with the compressed levels, it's not as straightforward as just saying, um, copy that data into into this location here, into 8300. And the reason for that is because it's compressed, so we need to decompress it. So luckily, um, if you look in Examizer, um, let me show you actually, I think I've got it, I think I've got it on my desktop somewhere. Let me open a new window. Oh, it was there in recent files and I just closed it, damn it. There we go. So when you download Examizer, it does come with a decompression uh, source as well. Uh, oops, that's not that one. Uh, so it comes with these these files here, uh, which are all decrunches for various formats of the uh, thing. Now they do come in a kind of task format or Oh, why is it open in Visual Studio? What's that about? Let's just do it there. All right. So they do come in this, this uh, uh, I guess it's task format. I'm not sure. It's, it's task or, or that. It's, it's one of those ones I don't like anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. Cheers, Hayes. Um, screw your Dolmio, though, to be honest. Dolmio's shit compared to homemade sauce. But each to their own. It's good that you're actually putting other stuff in it as well. Because some people just throw some mince and Dolmio in a pan and then don't do anything else. And it's just like, oh my god, that's like gross. At least you're putting onions in it. Uh, and extra tomatoes as well. That's good. So yeah, but still, I'd rather make my own. It's it's just nicer. Um. Anyway, yeah. So this is our this is our decryption uh, stuff. It's written in. I think it's in DASM or TASS. I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't use these uh, these assemblers, so I don't really re recognize them that easily. But what I did do uh, for Parasol Stars um, was convert it so let me just find that so that's what we're going to do is we're going to take no that's the editor where's parasol star so it's include here we go so we're going to we're going to save this file into our own um to our own project somewhere uh, and then we're going to edit it because it's very much set up for Parasol Stars at the moment. So it needs to be uh, rejigged a little bit to, to make it work for, for hours. Um, let's put it in... Let's put it in libs because it's kind of a... Uh, actually, oh yeah, tables is in there. Let's put it in there, libs, because it's a kind of library. Uh, what, no, what's the source? Yeah. Oh yeah, red wine is awesome. Put a glass of red wine in your in your sauce. Well, actually, not even put it. Don't even put it in your sauce. Cook the meat in the red wine 
while you're browning it. And then when the meat's browned, then add all your other stuff for the sauce. Anyway, this isn't a this isn't a cooking stream. <laughs> okay, so um I need to re now bear in mind I wrote this code over two years ago now, so You always have bottles of Nando's in the cupboard. I do. I can go and get a bottle of Nando's right now <laughs> to prove it. I'm not going to, but I do. Nando's or some equivalent thing. Oh, you do too. Good. What the fuck is Nando? Seriously, Acmovin. That's not a British thing, though, is it? Surely that's a worldwide thing, right? Portuguese. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, this is jump to sort in decrunch. Ah, right, here we go. Map data, map data X. So where is this maps data coming from? Okay, I think I need to load another file in here just to see. Uh, Da -da. Assets, levels, levels, I assume. Okay, so uh, maps data is. Okay, it's, it is literally just the XMIs. Oh my god, that's a really weird way of doing that. <sighs> okay, that's a very strange way of loading it. I can tell I really didn't. I was kind of new to it all by right then. Okay, so it looks like all I need to do is point it to the beginning and then call decrunch. Uh, and then I don't need any of this, so I'm going to get rid of all of that. So that's to do very much to do with. Um, Uh, very much to do with uh, parasol stars. None is a British company owned by South Africans selling ch Portuguese chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you guys and your freaking. Your um, chilling addictions. It's ridiculous. You need help, man. Okay, so I am going to drop all of this into uh, a namespace as well. Because uh, looking at this, I'm just trying to work out exactly what's going on here. Because it looks like it might be counting backwards, so I need to make sure it goes backwards. Okay, so let's call this uh, XO decrunch. Uh, I'm going to leave everything else as it is, except for this top function here, which I'm going to call uh, start. Uh, now, disable banks I don't need to do because that's already been done. And this stuff here. Um, I'm going to do it like this. You set up all the gambling and quizzes. Well, I set them up, but you guys, you guys came with the, uh, came with the um, addiction. Uh, no jump decrunch. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I could just do a tail call on this, couldn't I? Uh, just make sure that it's. Yeah, it should be fine. I think. All right. You know that one, Akmafin. 
Okay, so we're expecting. Uh, where is this get by? What is that? Is that get bits? <laughs> oh, it's here. Okay, yeah. See, I was still using beef back then as well. Uh, thanks for the bits, Emma. Oh, sorry. Thanks for the bits as well, Andy, as well. I was too busy answering your question of who set the, the, the things up. Uh, shall I need an easy quiz? I only know 1% of all games. Uh, you're with you're kind of with me on that one, Amok. I don't know that. I mean, I've I played most of these uh, and I still don't recognize half of them. Uh, quiz is too easy already. <laughs> Trying to blame innocent gamblers who can't do anything about their addiction. <laughs> I might um thinking about the the quiz. I might add um a, a score table on there as well. Um. Uh, thanks for the bits, Doxter. Uh, we need to move this quiz gambling stuff to a web page. <laughs> I should. Uh, I should create the Shalan Casino, shouldn't I? And oh my god, hype train. Or scam train as Hayes calls it. Yeah, we need to we need to create a little uh a little uh, casino page, don't I? Um Okay. So I basically I need to store it looks like it's counting backwards though, so I think I might need to store the end result in here. Let's let's give this a try anyway. Uh, missing cheers scam train woo woo come on Shannon, you need your wine i do don't know i'm trying to get through the uh trying to get through this quickly twitch figured out how to subvert ad blocker <laughs> okay um so let's import this now uh it doesn't really matter where i import this well, I kind of feel like I should import it in this location here somewhere. Um, so it's so it's kind of all together, I guess. Uh, how many bytes would that be if I just try and compile that? It's one eight nine. Okay, so I could fit that in here and still have enough room for quite a few levels. So if I did that eight eight hundred here, eight eight eighty here. And then this way we're keeping all the all the level uh, stuff together here. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit different to how I'm importing stuff here, but I'm I'm not too fussed that it's. I just like to keep this all together, and then it, I I know that this whole area of of the me memory is used for map decrunching and stuff. Not uh, just nibs. Probably don't need this much room as well for the map. It seems like probably an excessive amount of room here, but um, I'm going to leave it anyway because judging by the the, the result of the calculation here, um, I mean, even if I've removed that, so now it becomes uh, 3,000 because I've shifted everything along by 200 or uh, 512 bytes. Uh, and if I assume that a level can be more than a9 so if i say c0 which is much bigger that's still 64 levels so and that's being that's being uh generous with the uh uh the level amounts as well uh anyway thanks for the bits guys uh to everybody thanks me dog for the bits thanks any magic knight doctor for the bits and everybody else who i think i've already thanked now i'm candy and hayes appreciate it guys I kind of don't mind the um the spam too much. And the thing is even if I removed um the quiz spam uh and the race spam um you guys would still have ra ramble uh, raffle and gamble um 
and you'd still be typing points every five minutes anyway. So I, I kind of can't can't really win very much now. I blame um, I blame Twitch for removing the the uh, rooms. Having a second room with stuff in would be all right. You only don't mind because it gives you an excuse to ignore chat. I read m almost all of chat. It's it's a myth that I don't. Uh, cheers for the bit steps. I don't know why it didn't give you TTS. <laughs> which, I, which I feel you were trying to get there. You're not here for gambling. You're here to watch me talk and teach. And yeah, I thank, thankfully you guys can't spam my microphone. So that's that's one thing. All right, let me get another wine open. Another piece open. I'll have the wine after this bottle. I think the uh, I think the spam protection's a lot better on TTS at the moment. I don't know why. Okay, uh, so we've got those in. So if we have a look at map loading now, uh, we've got this load level, and what this was doing was copying that data in, and it's copying three pages of data into into here. So it's finding the start based on this, and then it's copying three pages of data in. So I'm going to put a note in here to say just copy one page because so far all the levels I've done have been in the range 160 to 169 bytes. So I'm going to leave it open so we can copy more. Uh, but this this is just going to copy 256 bytes uh, <coughs> into the into the correct location. Um, so. It's going to copy more than just the server. It's going to copy a little bit of this level. But the important thing is that it, it gets all the data from this level and puts it to, to this location here. So now what we need to do is we need to work out. Actually, can maybe we can make this more accurate. Spam the mic. <laughs> Thanks, Hayes, for the bits. I, I always like Hayes's uh, TTSs. They're inventive. Definitely inventive. <laughs> I'll just spam the mic here. Yeah. Um, okay, so what I'm thinking here is maybe there's a way uh, to, to just load exactly the right amount in here. Um, or actually maybe there's a way to just run the compression from here and unpack it directly in here. Hmm. Interesting idea. Okay. Let me just have a look at the decruncher. Okay. So the decruncher has a start. Where's its target? There must be a target that it writes to. Destination, here we go. Destination low, destination high. So where does it get those from? Oh, problem is though, it, it unpacks backwards, so I'm not entirely sure how best to do this. All right, let, let's just try a normal decompression first and see what happens. Okay, so I basically, I need to load uh, the accumulator with the low byte and X with the high byte. So, so decompress. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. And these need to be... Um, the last byte of the level so what that means is i need to work out how many bytes were in this level before this one so the easiest way to do this is is going to be to subtract these two um and then add this memory address and then subtract one um so so that would be so 
So for level one, that would be uh, level. This is the popcorn tune. Level look up uh, level so two minus. If that makes sense. So what we what we're doing is we need to find out the length of the level. Um, which we, I mean, technically we could store those here as well somehow as two bytes maybe. Um, actually, that's not a bad idea. Oh uh, no, because it won't know because of the. Uh, that's annoying. Uh... Wait, was that a joke? <laughs> oh my god. What's that game? What the hell is that? Oh, I have no idea what that is. No idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so... Hmm. Okay, let's put another vector in here. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to create a level, I'm going to call it level two data, uh, or next level data, actually. What was that, games? I didn't see what that was. Oh, I should just do it like that. There we go. And what I'm going to do is, uh, when we store this data here, I'm also going to store it in next level data. Uh, so I don't have to go and look that up again. And then I can load. Uh, super Stuntman. Thank you. Thank you, Andy Magic Knight. Thanks for the bits, dude. Okay, so we're restoring that value back. So now level data has the this value here. Uh, and so next level data needs to be that. So it also means we definitely need to have uh, a final level, even if there's nothing there. Uh, actually, let's do, let's call it level end. We need to have that there so that it can work out what the next level, where, where the level end would be when it needs to calculate it. Um, so we just move that along as we add new levels, basically. Um, so in that case, what we then need to do is we need to do this same calculation that we, that is done here. Uh, but need to add one to it first. And that only goes into next level data like so. Okay, so now we have this and this together. So we should be able to uh, take Oops. Got to subtract. Oh my god, this is really long, this tune. Um, okay, so now we can we can do this, and um, we can just store this back in level data. It really doesn't matter where we put it. Uh, okay, so now we have 
the level data pointing uh, con actually contains the difference between these two. Um, so all I have to do in that case now is add 8300. So uh, I can do that to this side here. And that now should point to our to the end. Oh no, not quite because I need to subtract one from it. Um, um, but I'm going to do that by subtracting one at this point because this is our next level. So if I do, yeah. So if I do uh, subtract one here, subtract zero here okay so level data now contains the right value so then all i have to do is node accumulator with um level data plus zero oops why is that not there we go node x level data plus one And there we go. That should, in theory, give us our XOD crunch start. Well, let's try it out. I mean, we can we can only hope, right? So, moment of truth. Do we see an actual? Okay, no. So we see a complete mess here. Um, okay. Let me go and have a look at uh, that location in memory. Um, this still looks like compressed data. It's still got the, yeah, it is. It's still compressed data. Yeah, all right. So that actually didn't do anything. So what happens if I put, if I just put 830? So I, it's been so long since I did deep crunching in the middle of a game without using self-extracting, so. <laughs> yeah, it does look like. No, it shouldn't be using forward crunch. It should be using backwards crunch. Uh, but let's, let's try it out. It could just be the format that I'm exporting uh, the 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 crunching as well so I'll I'll check everything in a minute uh, uh, why is that not working oh it's still not working right follow you you're passing one past the end of the day. Ah, oh, maybe I'm, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be doing that minus one. Maybe that's the problem. I was doing the minus one. Yeah, because that, that isn't doing anything, is it? That's not deep crunching at all. All right, let's try that then. So, um, so that was the end of the data here. And if I just get rid of the, uh, uh, this minus one here. Okay, that's now one past the end of the level data. What? 89? Oh, crap, I didn't even see that that had gone in there. How is the level being compressed? It's uh, done with Examizer. Yeah, it's not, it's not decompressing the level at all. What's going on? Have I exited out of this too early? Let me let me open up the original uh thing in Parasol Stars and just have a look what's going on in here. It's like I say it's been so long since I did this, I don't I don't even remember how I did it. Uh XOD punch. 
Okay, so map worlds, map worlds plus one. Okay, and that was based on let's just move on this here. Yeah, which is passing in the end here, which is I don't know what has that byte at the end there, but it does. Yeah, so that that is actually passing in. Uh... Oh wait, hang on, what is that? So that's passing in. Oh no, that's right. Okay. But what kind of compression? Memory compression. I think. Uh, yeah, memory. I could try with level as well. It might be level compression. I can never remember which one it is. I couldn't find the original compression files for for this either, for Parasol Stars. But um, yeah, okay. So looking at this, this is grabbing the end byte here. So it is one past the end. Okay, so... All right, let's try let's try changing the compression format in here. So we'll use level instead. Uh, I think I can just do that. I'm, I've, I've told you this before, Hayes. I don't, I don't need it. I'm fine with it. XMI is absolutely fine. I like to, I like to use something that I've either written or is, is, is used by everybody. Um, I mean, go ahead and use it. It's fine, but you're probably not going to make very much difference compared to, um, compared to using XMizer. I'd rather use something that, um, I've written myself because you I guarantee 100% you're not going to understand his code so and for me that's that's kind of a must so you don't seem to be fine with that I haven't touched it for two and a half years I'm absolutely fine with it um <laughs> Using somebody else's code isn't going to solve anything. It's just going to give me something else to to have to try and figure out. I've used this perfectly fine in in Parasol Stars, but I haven't used it for two and a half years. So of course it's going to take me a few minutes to work out. But I will work it out, and I will work it out during the course of the stream. I'm not going to have to go away and spend three weeks trying to figure it out or anything. Which is what I'd have to do if I got somebody else's code. I just, I, I it's been so long that, that it, since I've used it, I can't, can't remember what settings I've used for any of the compressions. So, hi, Click Tech UK, welcome to the stream, dude. You've got to bear in mind that everything, everything I've done on this stream has been done live in front of you guys. So I'm not fucking a machine. I can't remember every single thing. There are going to be certain things that I don't remember, especially if I don't use them all the time. And XMIRS is one of those things I don't use. So yeah, it just annoys me a little bit when people tell me to use somebody's, somebody else's code, like like I don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Um, I, I just find it kind of frustrating and, and unnecessary to tell me to use somebody else's code. Um, let's see that person. Let let me see anybody who, who you suggest <laughs> write that code live on a fucking stream with people. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I know. I get you joking, Hayes. It's just, I, I just, sometimes I just kind of, I get kind of a bit annoyed by things like that. So apologies for going off on one a little bit there. Okay, right, let's try exporting the level again. Let's 
So this time I've used level compression, which which changes things a little bit. Did that actually save? I don't know if that saved. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. I'm going to have a look in here. Yeah, it did. Okay, right. And I want to check what that's done. It's a file in here. Okay, yeah, this does look a little bit different. In fact, it looks a lot smaller for some reason. Interesting. Oh, no, it's not that much smaller. Okay, but it is. It is different, though, that's for sure. Uh, I don't, I can't remember the exact amount, but it's in that same range. It's in the kind of 160 to 170 range. So, Okay, so, well, it's decompressed differently. Something different has decompressed here. But I don't think it, I don't know if it has, the, if it's that it's compressed, decompressed differently, or if it's just different in memory. Uh, No, it's not decompressing at all. It's not decompressing at all. Maybe, maybe, ah, ah, okay. I think what I need to do is this. I think I need to set a target location for it. I seem to remember it needs to know where to, um, where to decompress things to. Uh, I'm using what I've learned from you to make a game. I tried to learn from other two, but there's so many slight differences for a newbie. I found it best to learn from one person. Um, yeah, uh, that makes kind of sense. It's added the colors from Parasol Stars. Source folder Parasol Stars, yeah. Yeah, I do apologize, Hayes. I do get, I do get kind of uh, defensive a little bit with that because, as I say, you know, um it's it's really easy and i know you're only joking but you you wouldn't be you wouldn't be the first person to say something like that to me and i do it does kind of irritate me a little bit uh because none of these other people that anybody ever suggest ever do this shit live they spend weeks and weeks doing their piece of code and, and reiterating it on it over time i do this shit live and i try my best to make it as close as possible but So Examizer, yeah, so this is a common misconception with Examizer. So what Examizer does, <laughs> I've said boss. <laughs> thanks, Andy. Thanks for the bits, dude. Um, yeah, so so Examizer is a compressor. It's not a decruncher. The decruncher you have to supply yourself. Now, they do supply some, some source code for that, uh, as I said in here. But that source code is in task format, and it's very specific to certain ways of doing compression uh, you still have to kind of understand what's going on in these to to kind of really make good use of them um the only the only automatic decrunching is the self-extracting one which we tend to use when we're doing um uh final gain compression so when we've done the dissect streams and we've created a, a final prg file we'll use the self-extracting but i mean you could do that in here you could use the self-extracting one here but then it would increase the levels every level size by a few hundred bytes which is not what we want and the thing is is once you get the system set up it's quite easy it's just it's just figuring out how to set the bloody system up in the first place um <laughs> what i really like about Examizer as well is it, it's really cleverly designed it's, it's designed to use the power of modern computing to compress something in a way that uh, the power of an old computer can decompress it efficiently and quickly um, which is not the case with most compressing tools so the most compression tools tend to be Round about a fifty fifty split, maybe a little bit more on the on the compression side, but um they do tend to be a lot more kind of balanced, whereas Xmise is very, very much focused on compressing something in a way that it can be decompressed super easily um which I think is is quite genius to be honest, but this is what crunches are all about crunches are all about using kind of 
powerful computers to kind of compress things in a way that slower computers can decompress them. Um, I'm pretty sure if you try to run the the compression on on a on a C64, it would take forever. All right, let's uh, let's try that out. Use the KK seven. Yes, I do. I do have that, um, but I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so it's just got the colors wrong here. Uh, I'm not sure why it's got the colors wrong. It's also missing some of the data for some reason. But you can see we're we're almost there now. Okay. Question is though, why is it missing the other data? Interesting. Uh, hmm. what is going on why let, well let's have a look at the map data so the map data is up here so it should load the level in and then all this other data uh colors are towards the end here It's got the player spawns. It hasn't put any pipes in though. Am I just missing some data? Have I have I not exported everything? Maybe I've not exported everything. Uh I'm not sure what's going on here. Hmm. Oops. Thanks for the resource, bad boy. Appreciate it, dude. Um, hmm. I try to think why it would do this because it seems to have, it seems to have done a lot of the stuff, but not everything. So it's done, it's done this, and it's done this, but it doesn't look like it's done the pipes. Um. So maybe it failed after this point. Let's go and have a look in memory. Okay, so here's our map data. Our map data goes up to 220 or so. So we should see six bytes of player spawn data somewhere. Um, so wait, what is our map? Our map is 220, which is uh, DC who we go to. So that's here which means these are our uh player spawns uh which is x y x and y yeah that looks kind of correct and then some pipes one day and then it's just blank loads of it is just blank is it just because i'm not copying enough data maybe Shouldn't be, surely. Let me go and have a look at our map export. Maybe I'm just not exporting enough from the map. Uh, so let's turn off. Let's just turn this off for a second. Yeah, you, you know, I don't know you mentioned the font thing before, but I can really see it now and it's driving me mad. It is, it's, it's, it's winding me up a lot now. Um... Okay, right, let's let's just let's load that same level again. And then I'm gonna save it to the desktop in its uncompressed format and just make sure 
desktop. Okay, uh, let's call it test test map dot bin. Right, and now let's just load that into here. So. I am going to take a break in a minute um, just to get some fresh air because it's really warm in here. Um, uh, okay, yeah, so here's our data here. That's the end of the spawn stuff. So that's this bit here. Uh, but when I looked in here, uh, Oops. Oh, wow. Somebody was super quick there, I think. I don't know, not that quick, but it's still quick. <laughs> oh, no, Ace. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Who got who got what there? Thanks for the host, Aquafin. Oh, thanks for the host, Aquafin. Thank you. Thanks for the host, Proud Seven, as well. So I was just reading, <laughs> just reading Doxa's text. Am I vaping? I am vaping. Yes. And welcome to the stream, Proud Fig. Okay, so that data ends here, and then it's this date here, 149C, which which definitely matches the data here. 149C, and then... Then it goes blank. It's like, after that, it's completely blank. It doesn't, it doesn't read any more than that. Which makes me think I've got, I've probably got one of these calculations wrong down here. I think that's all it is. I, th I think this is wrong here. So I'm going to stick a breakpoint in here and see what's going on. Uh, and then I'm going to just quickly test this out and then I'm going to go for a, a quick, quick, uh, for this on the balcony. And then when I come back, I'll open the, well, I'll drink the wine. Yeah, a few people are having problems with the, uh, a few people are having problems with that tonight, the, the lag, I don't know why. Uh, sorry, I'm scrolling up through the chat to see if I missed anything. It's far too much, far too much stuff going on in the chat now. All right, let's, uh, let's give this a run and see what happens. Um, I can't, I, I'm pretty sure I'm just pointing to the wrong end of data because it, it's, it's showing me an odd odd position. Um, oh, and see, in fact, it didn't even. Why didn't it break there? What? Oh crap! Oh my god. All right. We weren't even doing the level load. That's why. That's why it's all failed because we weren't even doing the freaking level load. And I bet if I go and open one of these files, for God's sake, that's that's annoying. That's that's really really annoying. Um if I go and load like this in. Yeah, it gives me the fucking hell. It gives me the full level. All right. That means my compression was probably right the first time. So I'm going to undo this. So. Uh, all right. Oh, I like this tune. David Whittaker, it doesn't surprise me. Oh, 
All right, let's load in a level again. Let's go for the same one again. Right, I want to double check that in here to make sure that is actually compressed data, which it is, which is cool. All right, and now let's give this a try. So it's probably going to be all broken again now, but I know why it wasn't working. Okay, accumulator and X look right. So let's go. And a CPU jam. Right, okay. I'm going to go and take a quick break, guys. Uh, when I come back, we'll figure that out. But um, I know why it wasn't working out. because I was skipping the whole whole thing. So at first, when we were seeing jumbled levels, it was because it was just loading um, compressed data in and, and nothing else. Uh, and then when we saw the correct level, it was because it was no longer compressing the level, but it was only copying exactly uh, 256 bytes in. Okay. I should be back in a few minutes, guys. Uh, I shall leave the races on, and I'll see you in uh, a few. <laughs> Have a nice. Thanks, Hackmuffin. <laughs> be right back, guys. Oh, I didn't put the I didn't put the quiz on properly. There you go. You can have a couple of minutes of the quiz on properly. Apologies, guys. Because I've got two buttons. I've got a button that says race and a button that says break. So all I did was force a race, not not the actual break. Oh, nice. That was quick. My God, you got that while it was still like huge pixels. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to export this as a few different things here. So, um, uh, I'm going to call one mem bin because what I want to do is, is just test out a few different ways of doing this. Because I have a feeling the level one should work, but I, I want to I want to guarantee it first. But at least I know what's going on there. Let's get some wine in me. That's what I'm missing. The side is not good enough. Right, and let's go for same level as soon as it's the one we've got used to now. And now if I export it, I should get a handful of files in this folder now rather than just one. Uh, I think map one will probably get replaced. Uh, and then file location. Oh, it's not actually output. Oh, because it's freaking output them in this folder, hasn't it? Right. Um, uh, all right, that's going to be... It's going to be in here, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Mem and oh, it hasn't done level though. Interesting. Uh, okay. I don't know why it's only done one and not the other one. Maybe this doesn't work as a file. Am I missing something there? Oh shit! Oh no! Well, so it should be that. All right.
some of the pixels in your screen. Yes, it's because um, it's because I use a, a mask to uh, well a chroma key to remove um, some of the background. So All right, let's stop that now. So yeah, break break is stopped now. Uh, what if race is on while coding and off when on a break? <laughs> That's kind of what was happening there. Yeah, well, it's because I I missed missed them on my break, so. Unfortunately, this is this was always going to be the case with this game, that, um, and it, it will be the case with every game we ever do like this on stream. Is that we're going to have the first kind of ninety percent of the stream is going to be fast moving, lots of things kind of uh, being introduced, and then are you compressing multiple blocks with gaps between them, or is it all in one block? Uh, it's multiple. It's multiple blocks, but they're all um, they're all joined together. So I'll show you in a second. Let me just export this. Which is why I'm thinking this might be the proper way to do it like this and then compress, uh, decompressing locate uh, rather than decompressing location is decompressed to a location. Um, that's, I didn't want to open it, I want to export. Okay, so that's going to override that and then in this folder here should get main and level there we go right so we've got two different files here so i'm going to copy them and put them into just while i work out which one i need to use men will fill the gaps between blocks with zero and level will skip the gaps yeah, it doesn't really matter which one I use because the the gap. So, the the way this works is uh, in terms of where the data is stored, it's just stored as individual files like this. So, I'm not um, I'm not compressing um, lots of blocks. Each block is compressed individually. So, one map is is blocked uh, is compressed on its own. Um, and there is no there is no gap between them, so it's not it doesn't have to um, it has doesn't have to do those level level is probably the the right one to use here. And the reason I say that is because I think what I can do with level is I can point the decompressor to say here uh, and say decompress, and it will decompress the level before it. So it will decompress this. Uh, but because you can pass in a, a location, it will decompress this into this location here. So I think that's what I'm going to go for here. So if I just put level dot bin here um, and change the decrunches, not the decrunches, sorry, the map loader. So instead of copying the data from here to here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to not do that copy at all. And instead, I'm just going to point to uh, the last page. So I probably don't need to do much of that as well. So I'll comment that out. But instead, what I do need to do here is add one. So now what this is going to do is instead of pointing to level one, it's going to point to level two. Uh, and that data is going to be in these lookups here. Uh, uh, level data and, and next level data. It doesn't matter if it's, oh, it's just them out because we don't need them as well if this works you have to control the compressor side the final desk well you you do in some cases you don't in all cases so there are some formats where if you um if you decompress it will decompress in position um but i think it's probably quite quiet because i'm talking there i'll knock it up a little bit there you go guys but I think you're right for I I think it's probably the, the one way you have to tell it is probably the best one here. Because it also means I don't have to copy this as well, so it'll be a little bit quicker. Let's give that a try.
Okay, it's just pointing to 891F, which would be here. Yep. Still jamming though. Why is it jamming? It's jamming in here. Oh, hang on. Zero page. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. I need to move some of these zero page things. Probably why. Uh... uh... It should be all right though. This is all at the upper end. Uh, thanks for the follow and not Charlo. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, uh, I'm just wondering if it's something to do with. I need to figure out exactly what addresses are being used here. Also, I'm getting some real... Oh, it's because that's open, for fuck's sake. Okay. Uh... Zero page addresses. Okay, so these should be all right, though. I don't see why these would be a problem. Um... Because our zero page doesn't come anywhere near that at the moment. Oh, no, it does, actually. It goes up to C9. All right, let me try just moving some of these into here, then. Um, Okay, so that, that could definitely be a problem because we've got all sorts of shit going on there. If the NIAC here is trying to do something there, then it will cause all sorts of weird problems. Well, that one's commented out, but okay. Why is that not loaded? Oh, it's already got it open here. It's fine. Okay, no, so it's still failing there, but we've moved the, the zero page addresses, so that's fine. Let's go and have a look in here and see what it's failing on. So it's failing on... Oh my god, what is that actually? Where is that? D six Caesar. Let's have a look what's going on in here. Okay, so it's failing on Oh, this here. It's dropping down into this for some reason. Why is it dropping down into that? It really shouldn't be. Okay, let's go and have a look at the original lexamizer code uh, oops that's steam not oh, steam open uh, let's open a new one of those
maybe I've done something. Oh, fuck off with that. Oh, I already, oh no, I got it there. Okay, so problem is. Right, where's the, where's the other table that was put in there? What? So did it just have an RTS? Is that what I'm missing? Uh, uh, uh. I'm trying to find where this this actually is because the decrunch table is this here. The table bit is weirdly completely different values, which makes me wonder if I've actually put the right values in here at all. Does that code fall into data? It does fall into data. This is what I'm worried about. There's something broken here. I'm trying to figure out why that's... that's. But I'm trying to find it in the original code. I don't seem to be able to find it. I'm just wondering if that's even the right code. Um, these are stream decryptors, so it wouldn't be those. Um, Ah, okay, this is the one that I've used, okay. Look, like, what is... Where is this dropping into? That's why I don't understand. This is dropping into this. This is the code that I've used. This is definitely the DASM code that I've used. Um, let's have a look. Uh, thanks for the sub fit trend. Appreciate it, dude. Apologies for not uh, getting very far tonight. I'm, I'm a bit kind of confused over why this is behaving differently to what it used to. I'm going to I'm going to try um for a suggestion and go with mem uh, instead but I have a funny feeling mem is not going to know where to decompress to I need to look at the let me just read through the instructions again I as I say it's been two and a half years since I did any compression because uh, I just haven't needed it up to this point so I uh, have to bear with me while I try and figure it out. I could have probably done this before the stream, but it's good that you guys see the the process as well. I think the mem level and SS, SS can all crunch file backwards. Okay, so we know that. Um, oops, where did that go? Okay, so we can set a few various things. Uh, load address okay so file name at load address and mem is load address set the load address of the output be plain file
notice of the output PRG file uh, and address learning and address node and address yeah I mean that's I mean that's essentially what I'm doing um that's essentially what I'm doing I need do you know what I need to know I need to know um what the correct command is to use here instead of l non can I just put um is this load address of where load address non Mem command writes its output in PRG format. So that's the load address of the output PRG, which is not what I want because I want to be able to load them from anywhere, but I want my target address. How do I change the target address? That's what I need. Uh... Uh, file name at load address. Ah, ah, okay. So if I do uh, at 8300 here, set up an address for my dcrunch table. Yeah, that's that's all configured. Um, So the decrunch table is here, and that is configured here. I feel like it's missing something here. I feel like I feel like this. I feel like something is missing in this for some reason. Uh, let me just go and double check because, as I say, I had this working in Parasol Stars. I know it works in there because. Or every level loads with it. Um, but there is some small setup before the hat before it starts. So this is the most basic version, and this is just this is low unpacking the backdrop. And that works absolutely fine. And you can see it's got the same stuff here. This kind of doesn't make any sense. I feel like this this should be a jump because, I mean, I don't know if it's trying to save bytes or something, but, I mean, that's kind of crazy. That, that's asking it to drop down into the other code let me let me just switch that actually to a jump see if that actually fixes it probably won't but i'm going to try it anyway uh, <laughs> did you have it working on creatures three <laughs> Yes, we're not right there. You can share your so I, I honestly I don't I don't think it's that file because I, I, it's more to do with the compression itself, I think. Because I, I, I have like I say, I've used this file. It's absolutely fine in Parasol Stars. I don't know why it's different um different here. Only problem is I can't test Parasol Stars properly because I, I broke the cartridge load of stuff on it. It's not working properly, but I know that this bit, I know that this file works. I just don't know why it doesn't work with this particular file, which makes me believe it's the format itself, which is why I'm going to try, um, try a few different formats here. Yeah, no, I've, 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 again, I've already done that. So the, the code that I converted has that use literals flag already kind of worked out. So you don't have to do anything. Um, 
Uh. Okay, so that's the level loaded. Uh, actually, I'm just going to save it to the desktop because this is not going to put me in the right place anyway. I need to go in here and grab it. So I think now, because I've... I, I think the problem is, is where it's decompressing stuff to. I think it's decompressing to the wrong place. Uh, now this is using this location here. So I want to just check the mem here and see what that looks like. I mean, in all honesty, it looks exactly the same. Uh, Okay, let's let's try mem. Is that not loaded? Oh, for a sec. I'm losing the will to live tonight. Uh, okay, those values look fine. Okay, it didn't crash that time, but the date is obviously very wrong. But I can see it's there are some patterns in it. Oh, it crashed. <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, it's so annoying because I've had this working on Parasite. In fact, I'm sure I did something not long ago using it. Um, what did I use it on? Okay, let me check something. So I'm going to have a look at a Parasol Stars level. Uh, like that. I just want to see what... See, it has a load address in here. Which I'm not getting. Oh, ah, hang on. Hang on, let's go back to this and let's restore all of the stuff I commented out here. Look at that, right. <laughs> Isn't that fun that not everything is always easy? Yeah, that's, I mean, that is that is kind of what I like, but it's just annoying me that I've done this before and it's just deciding not to work now. Um, it's freaking typical, to be honest. It's just massively frustrating to have these issues when I know that I've had this working. But nah. Uh, okay, right. Let me just go through this again. All right, so...
sets the out file name, and then sequence offset no, okay. All controls backwards, okay, and we've got that, we know that. Okay, so to the PRG, you simply add the file name to the command. Sorry, bear with me. I'm trying to read stuff here, so. <sighs> Fuck's sake. I'm kind of losing the will to do this right now. Um, I may skip ahead and just do some bug fixing. Uh, hey, Carlton. Welcome to the stream, dude. I don't understand the difference between well not not even the difference between but why why when I try and load this in is it just not not having it at all um for some reason it's just not it's not accepting the d crunch properly um see this is this is my uh, D crunch. Well, this is my map data for Parasol Stars, right? And you can see in here, um, I have an area of memory which I reserve for the screen. Then I have my my background data, which is always the first one here, uh, and then my actual map data itself. Um, And then when I load the levels, uh, which is in, is it this one? Yeah. Direct. I don't know what that is, but um, oh, that's working out the width of the level. That's fine. But. <sighs> It should be unpacking the map from this. And all this is doing is setting those. So exactly what Fori was saying, we're setting those two bytes. Um, setting those two bytes, a bit of Torican, I like this tune. Uh, setting those two bytes correctly. Um, and then loading them uh, using the D crunch. But I'm, what I'm missing, what I think I'm missing here is not, I don't think it's the assembly. I think the assembly is fine. What I'm missing is, is what am I, how am I supposed to compress the data? That's what I'm missing here, I think. I think that's where the problem is, is arising here. Because if I go and have a look at, um, let's, in fact, we've got the levels here, right? So this is the level data as it's, uh, as it's uncompressed. This is what it looks like. This is fine. This is exactly what we want. The question is, is how do we compress it to, to match these files? No, that's what I thought I would have. That's what I was trying to find, and I can't find it anywhere. Um, so I don't know where the hell I, I had that. It is a real pain in the ass. Um, so let me let me try some stuff here. So... One thing I notice is if you look at the levels from um, from Parasol Stars, they have these two bytes here, uh, which is exactly where that level should be loading in in memory. Uh, and you can see they're all exactly the same. They're all loading into that exact place in memory. 
which makes me think something in the XMI is, is loading to that location. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and recreate that um, from the terminal. Um, oh shit, I don't, have a, I don't have a Linux terminal on here, so that's fine. I'll use the Windows one. I actually do very, very little uh, in the way of uh, in the way of terminal stuff on this machine, so oops. Fuck off, Windows. Oh, So, when I do level and I pass in map1.bin, if I pass in that, or maybe if I do at like that, and then save that out as level.bin. Okay, so it does compress. It doesn't actually say anything in the compression. Crunch in from... Okay, no, it is. It's it's loading into that. Like, okay, let's take a look at that then. Ah, now here's something interesting. The first two bytes is actually the end. That's interesting. That's actually giving me the end address. So, is this crunching forwards? Maybe I need a forwards crunch. I think I'd probably set my ex freaking thing to do forward crunching. I freaking have, haven't I? I've said to do forward crunching. Ah, man. Yeah, no, it's not in a make file, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's what I think I've been doing, which is why that that value wasn't matching because I think I'm crunching forwards, which means my x my d crunch is set up to crunch. A D crunch forwards as well. So um, let's give this a try. <laughs> yeah, the first two bytes are definitely pointing to the. Because uh, that, that seems to be fine there. And if I go back and comment all of this crap out again. Oh, hang on, I had the wrong... Ah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, curses you. Well, I think we're getting somewhere. I think we're getting somewhere. It's just I didn't realize I was crunching them forwards. So the code that I've got here is, is I've obviously set this up to do the decrunch forwards as well. Uh, so I can't change any of that. I just need to make sure that I'm doing exactly the same thing as I should here. Uh, maps data comma X. Okay, so we're actually loading... Okay, so it is loading the, the start address of this data. So let's do that in here as well. So let's 
let's get rid of all of this. We don't need any of that anymore. Oops. And let's set this to zero. Damn, damn. I think we're getting there. I do think we're getting there. I just need to to work this out exactly. So and now instead of doing Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that. No, I I don't mind it to be honest. I don't mind I don't mind it too much. Uh oh. I wouldn't say I like it, but um I it doesn't bother me too much. Um Oh fuck it now, this is Oh god it's driving me mad this. Can't believe I don't have the original build scripts. That's so annoying. Haha, <laughs> yeah, it's on 64 viewers. That's cool. <laughs> uh, right now. Oh my god. Uh Let's 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 skip out all of the crap. Let's just put this straight in here. Then let's make this decruncher as simple as we can possibly get it. <laughs> yes, why? I'm I'm sure I'll get it. I, as I say, I, the problem with Eximizer is it's not very well documented with examples. It kind of tells you what, how to decompress, but it doesn't give you many examples. So, uh. Uh, but thanks for the bits, Hammock. Appreciate it. And yes, more wine to the rescue. It's always going to be the solution, right? Wine and nicotine. Okay, so what I'm trying to do now is just, first of all, I'm just going to get anything that's related to parasol stars over that side so I don't get mixed up. Um, I just want to basically do the, the bare minimum here to, to launch this level. So I am not going to do any of this crap up here at all. Uh, I'm just going to call the crunch start. And then in here, um, I'm going to actually load the start address in manually here. Uh, I'm loading the map directly into this position here. So we're not doing any copy, we're just going to try and load it from that location. And let's see what happens. Yeah, as far as says, any one, any one move, wrong move and you're just kind of, you're stuck debugging for hours. And that's what's going on here right now. Okay, so I don't think that worked. So let's have a look. So what did we, how did we compress that? So we used level. Uh, we told it to to compress at this location and forward compress. So let's try memory.
Okay, so this wrote, actually wrote in a weird way, it wrote, Okay, so that wrote at 8382. Let me just go and have a look at what that looks like in here. Uh, not that one. Yeah, so this is written at 8382 now. So let me change that to 8382 in here. And let me change this to 8382. And it's still crashing. God damn it, why? Why is that doing that? So let's go back to the... Um, I say so the backdrops would de de crunch backwards looking at this because that's using map one end here. Okay, let's try, let's not try forward, let's try backwards, okay. Okay, so now this is, this is written it a bit differently, which is interesting, because this is now written 8 to FE. Ah, okay. Okay, this is making more sense. Because that matches load binary okay but now this isn't going to go backwards so i need to set the i need to set the crunch to go backwards so let's have a look to 83a0 so let's change this to a3a0 let's try that we'll try a few different locations here i'm just going to have to keep fiddling around it until I get this right. Uh, something has not worked. Color data overlaps. Demo map. Okay, so in that case, uh, not that one. Because that's a load address there, so I'm just going to save that like that. I put it at eight three hundred. No, all right, so that's not having it either. Fuck's sake. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm kinda annoyed. I don't really want to spend too much time doing this. It's uh it's not the most interesting thing in the world to watch. Um To his still like, hey, hey, Warlock, I do have your SIDs. Let me let me put them on. So let me see what they were. Yeah, I've got it. I got it. Uh God, that's, I really need to up the text size in my. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of frustrating because I do want to get this working, but at the same time, I don't want to spend three or four hours on the stream just doing these. Um, 
uh, just just doing this because it isn't going to be that interesting for you guys um and it would probably just be easier if i just kind of went away after stream and just fixed it um rather than rather than put you through this because we can do something more interesting we can start working on some of the bugs instead um I'm going to give it another I'll give it another 20 minutes if we don't get anything by by midnight then we'll move on to something else. Yeah, if what whatever I do if I don't fix it now <laughs> okay now. If I don't fix it now then um however I do fix it we'll we'll I'll go over on on stream at some point. Uh Okay, let's try this way. Eight four one D. Okay, so we've had that one before. Nobody got it that time either. Oh, God's sake. Krill's contributed decruncher. Is that what I use? Maybe I use that one. Ah, this is the one. Yes, this is the one that I use. And it is a forward decruncher. Okay, so we definitely need to do the crunching forwards. Okay, okay, right. Good job the quiz is there, actually, or else you guys would just be, like, falling asleep right now. I'd be surprised if you weren't falling asleep already, but... So, does that actually mean I can just do this? No, it does not mean I can do that. I'm following the it's only early evening here. Uh, thanks for the follow, An uh, Anonym, PDA, and Lost and Bored. Thanks, guys. Uh, Lost and Bored is exactly how I feel at the moment with this decompression. I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is uh, tomorrow I'm going to, <laughs> oh, nothing will beat the one I stream. So I think what I'll do after this after the stream is instead of messing around in this kind of mishmash of code, uh, I'm going to write a standalone uh, compressor, decompressor code and just look at it that way. Uh, get it working in a little program first and then uh, and then. And then, do it. yeah, I mean, this is this is what I've been trying to do. This is why I have chat. This is why I kind of do this. But I'm I'm going to do it in a I'm going to do it in a separate program for now. This is. Um, I, I'm just banging my head against the wall, so um, I'm instead of kind of keep doing this over and over again, I'm just going to restore the original 
uh, loading in. Uh, which means I do need to copy multiple pages in and just get rid of this. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just do it this way, and then when it comes to um, when it comes to doing the compression, I'll work it out off screen first, uh, and then when I've worked it out off screen, I can tell you what it was to do it. It's it's going to be something really simple. I know it's going to be something really simple. Um, because I, I, as I say, I've done this before. I've done this before, and it, I remember it being the same kind of pain in the ass thing. So, um, uh, 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 uh. I, I'm pretty sure that the issue does not come down to the code that's decompressing but comes down to the format for the actual compression itself. Oh, sorry, guys. I keep missing those. Uh, thanks for the uh, follow Linux Gamecast. Let me put my headphone in a little bit better. There we go. And thanks, Warlock, for the reminder. So, yeah, I'm just going to get it to load. Uh, I'm going to get it to load. Oh, my God. These are all over the place now. Let's. I'll put them in compressed, but I'm going to get rid of these ones. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export a couple of levels, map one and map two. And we'll just check that those work properly. Um, they should do. Okay, so let's... So, I mean, this is going to give me uh, compressed levels as well. Actually, it's not giving me compressed levels. Okay, that's fine. don't care that it doesn't, to be honest, at this moment in time. In fact, let me just double check that that hasn't compressed it. It hasn't. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's load another level in. That one's going to take a bit long to complete, so I want a quick one to complete. I think that was a bug test. Okay, that's got some blocks I need to clear. Uh, yeah, let's give that one a try. All right. As I say, I will do the compression off stream. It'll give me a bit of time to think about it when I'm not kind of, I, I feel a bit worked up by it. That's the other thing as well. Um, uh, oh, I've, my map was all. Uh, it doesn't have all the deep sid. No, I have uh, the HVSC stuff mostly. Um, Uh, uh. Okay, uh, let's let's give that a try. So hopefully, did I actually save then? Or I think I saved, didn't I? Yeah. Let's go ahead and sort some bugs out. So let's, uh, let's play a little bit and try some bugs. I I, I do feel really wound up by that. Oh, that was interesting. Though, okay. Uh, uh, let's see that again. It shouldn't have gone black at that point. I'm not sure why it did go black. Yeah, it shouldn't go black there at all. Um, let me try switching those maps around, see if it does it on this map as well, because it should pick the right colour there at that point, and it doesn't for some reason. No, it starts off with black, oh, and it shouldn't have these at the side here, these should not be here. Uh, 
Um, okay, why is it not getting that? Okay, let's switch them over again. I want to see this cock and balls, and do we have to change it? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, ah, oh, it's it's is it abstract enough? I think it's abstract enough. Maybe if it wasn't pink, it would be all right. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm a bit. Concerned as to why it's suddenly showing a black background when it moves across because it really shouldn't be doing it at that point. Um, so I don't know what the let's just put that one in. Oh, I'm just put RTS in here, just trying to work out. So, so now, now I'm on a bug fixing mission, I'm not bothering with the uh. I'm not bothering with the um, compression right now. Okay, so that that actually finished with blue in the background. Let's do that again. That, sorry, it opened with blue in the background. Yeah, correct color there. Okay. So what is it about loading these levels in that breaks that color? Um, because it should be doing this. And then set in the color. Okay, that's fine. We can go and find out where it's set in those values. So, blendomizer decruncher adds cocks to every level. <laughs> I mean, the name like Fist Master, that's we're lucky that's all we got. Uh, 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 uh. See what did it actually? No, I'm not sure what it queued there. Donkey Kang level had a thin wall down either side as well. Yeah, it's it's possible um, that you were using something that was that's classed as invalid. So let me just have a check. Oh, we had that the other night. I think Eldritch got it then as well. Ah, uh, yes, it's because it's you used an, uh, an unusable character. So if we get rid of some of those. Um, so you probably want something like this instead. Uh, in which case you should also use this like that. Oh, that'll be fine. Uh, same up here as well. And then on this side, you'll need the same as well. I'll save this as well, so you don't have to do it again. Uh, that one. In fact, you probably just continue that down here, don't you? Actually, that one, sorry. So, there you go. One of the things you had is barrels. Yeah, I there was some there's some stuff in here that shouldn't have been used, and I, I've blacked it out now. Um, but if you submitted a level before, then it would have it would have put it in. So I'll save this out anyway. Um, I can see that there needs to be some dec more decoration on this level, um, but I like the I like the idea of it anyway as it stands. 
So this is map two. Oh my god. Okay, let's get back to why um, uh, why we can't see the right color when it loads up. Uh, just picked up a copy of Dot Cosmos this week. It's going to be a blast. Really enjoy. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Uh, don't we always want the left and right side to be identical on levels? Um, they need to have identical collision, not necessarily need to be exactly identical. So, for instance, the the tile here is not the same as that tile there. It's it's a mirror image of that tile there. Uh, the tile here is different to that tile because it has this platform coming out of it. But the collision down this side is the same as the collision on this side. So, um, yeah, the only the only time you need it to be well, even then, even with a wraparound, you would you would just want the collision to match on both sides. So it's not as it's not as easy as just kind of uh, saying, okay, this is on this side, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do the opposite on this side because this platform here would mean that th this would display this instead of this. So uh, it's not that straightforward, unfortunately. But it's fine. I mean, the the maps um, the maps are pretty good uh, in terms of space. We worked out we can probably get around seventy five maps in the game, which is quite a lot. So. Uh, I slightly changed an early million molly level. <laughs> How dare you change the uh, the level designers' levels? Uh, okay. Anyway, so to get back to this, right? Why why is the map color wrong when it loads in? So. I think it's because it's loading a background color in from this location. So it'd be this color here. Uh, and it's obviously not loading the correct value in at this point. So let me, let me put a breakpoint in here. Now kind of figure out where the hell this is in the list. Um, I can, because I can go and look for that. Um, and it should tell me in this here 8402 okay so if i look at 8402 when i hit this breakpoint we should be able to see what the transparent color should be and see if it matches okay so the color is correct here it's showing the light blue so something else is grabbing that color too early oh wait what Wait, what? 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 What happened there? Hang on, hang on. It's reading it before it loads the level. That's why. Okay. Okay. Easy enough. Um, took a wee while to figure out the enemy spawn part. Uh, come here, come on. Oh, I know. I know where it's doing it anyway. Um, basically, there is a a load level routine and just before the load level happens uh, uh i know i know kind of where it's happening but um where its location is in the code i'm not entirely sure but i'll find it uh so it's after the intro game entry okay so here's where we select the track so it's going to be before that transition crown initialize title card transition out and then we do normal loop, normal loop, end level, title card. Title card transition out, that's going to be where it is. Okay, so. Draw map. So here's where it's been set. But I think the load level is happening here in the draw map. So, draw map, yeah, jump to sorry team load level. So I'm going to move, um, I'm going to move those things from in here, uh, which is, shit, where did that go? God damn it, I've lost it now.
There we go. I'm going to move them from there. And instead, I'm going to put them there. So we should see light blue. Um, oops, no, it's a break point. Yes, there we go. Okay, where's that break point coming from now? God damn it. I've put a break in somewhere and forgot to remove it, and I don't know where it is. There it is. There we go. Oops. All right, so let's have a look. Let's keep an eye. We're just going to play through a little bit and just keep an eye out for some bugs. I'm going to go and have a quick smoke, actually, first. Um, so I'll leave you guys with the quizzes, which I will press properly this time. Um, and I should be back in a few minutes, and we'll we'll crack on with the bug fixing and stuff. Uh, all right, back in a few minutes, guys. Be right back. All right, I'm back, guys. Uh, I had to open my door and, and let some cool air in because it's getting really freaking warm in here. So, um, all right, let me stop the... Oh, one more quiz. Uh, thanks for the follow, Wildlander86. Welcome to the stream, dude. Okay, so let's have a playthrough, see if we can spot some, some kind of serious bugs in here now. Okay, so there is uh, there is the wrapping, sprite wrapping down here. So you'll notice when the player goes down here, um, he proper clips, uh, properly clips off the edge of the, the border, but the, the enemies don't. So that's one thing to do. Um, but other than that, Seems to be all right so far. Let's try and get. God damn it! That it's actually really hard. This level. Whose level is this? Because it is difficult. Because those things drop all over the show. Ah, oh, I could see that coming as well. See, I like that, the fact that you can see that you're about to die and you just can't do it. That's that's the sign of a good kind of good level design there. This isn't too bad, though. Um, how am I going to get those now? Right, let's try going this way. No, no. Cool, that's that's kind of a nice level. I like I like that. Yeah, it is definitely a thinker. Um, okay, that seems. I I didn't see if that counted up right, but it looks right. Ten, two thousand five hundred. Yeah, that seems to have done right. Ah, okay. So one thing I know it's not going to do. So look at our score here, twelve two hundred, and we're back to zero. So that's the first thing we need to do actually, because uh, that's kind of important. So we need to make sure that when we start the level, our our score is taken from uh, our zero page location here, uh, and is copied back into the into the hood properly. So, so two things we need to do. First of all, we need to make sure that that is reset to zero at the beginning of the game, um, which we can do. Uh, well, we can do it on the intro here. So let's. Uh, let's do it in the hood uh, and let's call it reset scores uh, and let's go find that where is the hood oh, I've kind of lost track of where I put things now they're all over the bloody show see hood is in player for some reason Now let's just put this in here. Okay, so reset scores is going to be really simple. That's just going to take the values uh, here and here and set them all to zero. Um, actually, is it zero? Is it three? Is it, it's going to be... 
I think it's going to be three zero. Let me let me see what happens if I set these to three zero and reset them to three zero here. Uh, The Sonic. I think someone played this the other night. It's a very good version of it. And set scores. So set set scores is basically going to take the values from this location here uh, and put them in the right place on the hood. Now, the only thing is we do need to do this one player at a time. And the reason we need to do that is because we need to check if this player is active before we actually do it. So let's do P1 here. Let's do P2 here. Because uh, if the player is not active, then we don't need to set the score. So And start the level skinny. Ah, yes, that's a good point. So we need to make sure that we start the level skinny as well. Um, okay, so here we need to do player dot players active, and this will be set. Uh, this this bit will be set if that player is active, and then we'll do the same here. Uh, just put exit on here. Okay, so now we're checking each player to see if they're active. That should be P2 here. Let's bring these all together, then it kind of... There we go. And then this will be the same loop. So now this loop needs to copy from here. And it needs to store that somewhere else. And this isn't going to be three zeros. This is going to be... I'm not sure what this is going to be actually. I, I'm going to fill. It's going to be filled with zeros, which is what it's doing up here. So let's just go ahead. Uh, and when we copy it from here to here, we we may have to add a value to it. So I think there's going to be. Uh, I think there's going to be an add in here, um, which I can't remember the exact number. Let me go and have a look at the box they had. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. I think it's that one. Doesn't really matter because it's it is this one. Okay, two twenty. Why is it two twenty? That seems really weird. Okay, whatever. So we're gonna add DC to it, and then we're gonna store that at the whatever the hood locations for the scores are. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You need to figure out where those locations are, uh, which I'm hoping would be in here somewhere. Um, Uh, well, there we go. Plus zero, plus thirty-two. Okay, cool. So then the same thing applies down here. Uh, but plus thirty-two and play a two score, and this is set score. And so we need to make sure that this is called after every bonus as well. So, um. We can actually do this as part of our map loader routine. So in here, we load the level. Uh, actually, does this lower? Who loads the hood? Let's have a look in here. Okay, so title card. Okay, title card, draw map, blackout hood. There's going to be a part where it redraws the hood in here somewhere, so I'm trying to find that. Oh, actually, no, we do it in... Oh, hang on, let's, let's find it. Blackout hood. 
Okay, so it's happening after that. HUD initialize, there we go. So basically in HUD initialize up here, as soon as we've drawn those things, uh, we can do set scores as well. There we go, right. Let's give it another try. Should 24 be panel Y pos? Ah, uh, yeah, it's just magic numbers. Lots of magic numbers in there. Yeah, yeah, there is. It's fine, though. Whenever I do uh, screen stuff like that, I tend to um, let me find it again. I tend to do it like this, so you can see exactly what's wrong. If if I just came up with a, a memory address, then yeah, I would put it in. But this is kind of it's obvious what rows are on here. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could probably solve a lot of this repetition by doing that. So yeah, maybe. But I'm beyond I'm beyond caring at the moment. <laughs> Okay, if it caused us, if it caused me lots of problems, then I would go in and do it. And then, in fact, I have done that in places, so um, but it's not been a problem so far. So, this level is really hard, I've got to say. You're not really safe anywhere. Things come on. If I'm honest, Andy, tonight, I just, I kind of stopped. I stopped caring tonight. No, backseat coding is absolutely fine. Backseat coding is, is absolutely fine. Telling me to ditch my shit and do, use somebody else's code is not fine. There's a difference between the two. And that's why I'm why I'm so frazzled tonight. Um, okay, that hasn't actually worked, has it? Hasn't filled that in down there. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. Thanks for the bits. Yeah, I'm just I I just kind of I I'm just not in the mood for that kind of crap tonight, if I'm honest. So. I'm sorry if I sound like I'm being harsh to anybody. I'm not. I sound sorry if I sound like I'm being ignorant to anybody's kind of requests. I'm not. Um, I'm just kind of not in the best of moods. There's a weird flicker going on here. I wonder if the sprite update is happening in a weird place here. Also, I noticed some of the hood is missing here. So there's a few things going on here. Um, uh so I change but ui elements can be maybe take constant yeah no no you're right um oh. <laughs> wait what hang on hang on That's what it is. <laughs> it's, it's fine, honestly. I don't. I don't. I, I don't um... Oh, come on! That's not fair. That's not what it's called. All right, I'm going to change that. That's not fair. That's that's wrong. Uh... No, it's fine. I, I, I encourage collaboration. I, I actually want people to uh to join in and, and, and kinda come up with why is that not finding it? There we go. 
oh yeah that's not fair it should have accepted should have accepted that as well i don't know why it's called that in fact that's not even what it's called so i'm getting rid of that because that's bullshit that's not what it's called so i don't call it kung fu next time it will pick up on the way of the exploding fist um Just a quick question. Have you tested on real hardware recently? Uh, not in the past couple of streams, no, but it, it'll be fine. I'm fairly certain on that. Um, let's have a look. Who did get that? So, uh, yeah, Steps should have got that. Okay, so I'll, I'll award Steps that. I don't know why that came through like that, because I should have noticed that was not called that. Um... <laughs> Thanks for the uh, gift sub there, Andy, to Carlton. I appreciate you, dude. All right. So ignoring ignoring everything else, the, the main issue now is I need to figure out why... Um, uh, why the score is not carrying over so in, in order to do this in an efficient manner i'm not going to try um i'm not going to try and uh create uh, i'm not going to try and keep completing that first so i'm going to create another level uh which is going to be super super simple and, and slide that in as another level to try so i can test that that bit Uh, where did that go? There it is. Right, okay. So it doesn't need to make a really, really simple level. So same shit that I did last time. It does need uh, a couple of pipes in. Uh, I'm just going to put one enemy in. Uh, a door. And a switch. I think that's all it needs, right? I think that's all it needs. All right, so export that. I'm going to call this map zero. And this is just a testing a testing map. Um because then I don't have to try and fight my way through these levels, uh, which I completely suck at, so Yeah, it is a caring community, and that's that's kind of what I want to do. So, I, like I say, I do apologise if I'm a bit kind of short-tempered tonight. Um, I didn't get off to a good start, to be honest. As I say, any any help is welcome. Um, just be constructive with your help. Ah, uh, don't worry, Hayes, it's fine. This this shit happens, it's fine. It's not I'm 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 fine, don't worry. Nothing wine can't fix. <laughs> I was kinda I was kinda angry before I started the stream anyway. I was I was kinda slightly angered by the um uh by the lemon forums and the the cb meeks um unfortunate kind of dealings with them t today as well that pissed me off a lot um and it was two things that annoyed me about that one was the fact that somebody should uh oh my god i just noticed my curtain rails almost falling down i might have to sort that in the next break um the um the the proper response to somebody sharing anything uh when when people are you know take the step of sharing something with the community because they're proud of what they've done right you don't you don't share something unless you're proud of it so cb meets rightfully posted something that he was proud of onto lemon forums and some asshole on there went oh well if that's taking you so long to do you shouldn't be a shouldn't be a, a programming games completely failing to understand that 
CB Meats had not spent the past seven years trying to figure out a small part of the game. He had actually taken a break from it for seven years and he came back to it in the last couple of weeks through joining our streams um, and made some decent progress on it. And I think he did really well with the, with the, the short time that he'd uh, gone back to it. And this asshole just said, you know, you shouldn't be making games. And then he had the cheek to say, well, um, so CB Meat said, look, you know, okay, fair enough. But looking at your stuff, I see that all you've all you've actually done is uh, disassembled a few, you know, reverse engineered a couple of games. That's it. Somebody else's. You've not done anything of your own. And this douche, douchebag, rightfully, as Hayes calls him, um, changed his changed his signature to say you've not done anything. You disassemble. I can't remember the exact words, but um, basically quoting CB Meeks and then writing attributing it to Commodore idiot. And it's just like, what the fuck, dude? Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So anyway, I, I I don't I don't really visit that forum often at all, and I certainly don't post on it very often. Uh, but I just posted to let him know that actually reverse engineering is fucking easy, um, and what's hard is writing something from scratch and then having the courage to share it with toxic assholes. So yeah, I mean it's. It, <sighs> Anytime you see anybody on that site with over a thousand posts, there's a very, very high chance that they're assholes. Um, not, all, not all of them. There's some good people on there. In fact, uh, Lassioni uh, piped up uh, just after me, actually, to, to also call him an asshole. Um, and he's got like 3,000 posts or something like that. So it just goes to show you don't have to have that many posts and be an asshole. But this guy had 4,500 posts in three years, which means he probably spent most of his time just being a dick on that forum. Um, and honestly, I mean, if he can turn around and, and say you shouldn't be writing games, we could probably turn around to him and say, look, if that's your attitude, you should probably just give up as a human being because you, you obviously have no skill at it whatsoever. Um, you're never going to be a nice person. So just, just go away. and Don't come back, please. I just, I, I can't abide people like that. It really annoys me. And it was the same with the um, the whole parallaxium thing. Um, oh, there's that. There's that crash. Oh, okay, so that still happens. Um, anyway, let's get back to the, get back to um, the original book. It was the same thing with the parallaxium thing. The guy had posted something and he made some incredibly bold claims, and he he rightfully got called up on them. He do, he he rightfully got said told. Um, you can't claim that you're the first person to do this because you're not the first person to do this. And he got incredibly arsely and defensive about it. And it culminated in him being... Um, it culminated in him being... Uh, I mean, all right, people were probably a bit harsh in picking him up on it, but it was his arrogance with it, I think, um, that kind of made people think, well, if you're going to be arrogant about it, I'm going to correct you and show you that you aren't the first to do this. And he argued it and argued it and argued it. And it ended up with him basically going on some bigoted rant about freaking um, transgender people and how he wouldn't send his child. He was homeschooling because he wouldn't send his child to school in case they ever had to deal with a transgender person. I was like, what the fuck, dude? I mean, just keep your shit to yourself, for God's sake. Just don't, you know, people like you should not be allowed on the Internet if that's the sort of crap that you come out with. But unfortunately, the world doesn't work like that, and we let idiots have a say. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous, um, and it should never have. He should never have even been um, supported at all. And the the number of people that that backed him just made me think, oh my god, am I in the minority for kind of standing up for, for people's rights? Or is it just, is, is the world just like this? Is the world just a pain in the ass? Uh, thanks for the, thanks for the follow Lulu too. Welcome to the stream, dude. Anyway, I probably shouldn't talk about these things. As I say, I'm not in the greatest of fucking frames of mind anyway. I'm probably just going to start ranting if I go on too much. So, um, so yeah, this is, I mean, this is partly why, um, I, I stopped kind of visiting lemon. 
it's partly why I do these streams and have the Discord as well, is because I know that the 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 resources that are out there are kind of scarce, um, and the, the 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 communities around them are pretty toxic. And I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that our community stays, um, or the community that we've built around kind of uh, around Twitch stays kind of friendly. And I think we've got that with with the Commodore streamers that we've got. Um, and then the people, the community that does kind of follow myself and cheers and kind of, you know, um, haze and stuff, they're all nice people. And I think, I think that's kind of because we all kind of talk to each other and we all kind of understand each other and we're understanding. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I will still occasionally go to Lemon because something has been posted there that I'm of interest interesting uh interesting same with csdb i'll go there because unfortunately it is kind of the best source for uh for getting kind of most of the prgs and stuff but um i have to say i don't like the majority of the community on those places so uh, if i had nothing bad from emma and uh Oh, from Millie and Molly, I see, yeah. Yeah, and, and to be honest, for, for the most part, you don't. But the, the problem is, is um, you get some people who are really quick to stomp down on somebody who's learning. <laughs> no problem, Retro Stephen. Thank you for the bits, dude. Cheers. Yeah, un unfortunately, the community um, outside of kind of our kind of little thing is very toxic, and it's it's very elitist. Um, unless you unless you show something which is one hundred and twenty percent and could sell as a, a top price game immediately, like if you show a work in progress, it's not a good idea. Don't show a work in progress because you'll probably get slammed for it in some way. Um, uh, in all honesty, don't show anything to those communities. They don't deserve it anyway. They can find out when it's when it's later on. Um, but yeah, work in progress stuff. They just they, and the thing is the thing with the CB Meeks thing um, and uh, I forget his name now, Amiga Max. There was no reason that what CB Meeks has produced is really good. It's really nice. What, what Amiga Max's problem was is he looked at it and then he looked at the fact that he'd seen a post from before he'd even joined Lemon. This is the fucking point. He'd been on Lemon for three years and he's got four and a half thousand posts. He'd he'd looked at that and gone, well, why is it taking you so long to do that? Like somebody is, spends their entire minute of every day doing this thing. And he started becoming all elitist and like, well, I could do this. I could do that. And that's just that is not the attitude to have with people at all. You should encourage people. If somebody wants to try uh, try learning something, encourage them. Don't fucking knock them down at all. And there's nothing to even knock down. I think he did an amazing job with it. So it's just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <sighs> Deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Carlton. I guess the other problem you've got is CSDB. Like me, I, I have a big issue with the with the cracking scene, and there's a there's a handful of people on that scene in particular that I cannot stand. That have this again. They have this elitist attitude, um, and as somebody rightfully pointed out on Twitter the other day, um, if somebody releases a demo, uh, or, or well, not even a demo, if somebody releases an intro. Uh, or, or a cracked version of a game, and they've basically taken somebody, some other cracking team's version of the game, changed a tiny little bit, and then re-released it with their own intro. They get really fucking arsy about it. Like, oh my god, what are you doing? You've you've stolen my work. This is this is our crack. We did this crack, and it's like, guys, are you are you realizing what you're doing? You're just you're you're having a go. No, I realize it's not just the cracking scene and and, and and this is what annoys me about it. There's some really really talented people on CSDB, and the demo groups I have nothing but admiration for. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the it's not the demo groups that are the most vocal uh, on the forums. 
uh it's it's the it's well not even on the forums on the on the uh release uh comments it's not those that are the most uh that are the loudest it's the it's the crackers it's the people who do nothing but steal they're the people um who who make the loudest noise and and for me just ruin the community completely so um and yes csdb doesn't help by um by awarding points for cracks um it's fucking pointless what is the point there's no protection in these games anymore there's zero point to it it's just a massive ep thing and it's just it's stupid right anyway i'm getting completely fucking distracted oh my god <sighs> right I got an intro for Reset City for last year, uh, and it was a game inside that intro too. It was cracked and trained. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we need a Shallon DB. <laughs> I, I the the one thing I hate is where they go. Well, it's free advertising, but it's not free advertising. What it is is it's a group of elite people who are, and they go, oh well, you know, you can't download it here because because it's a commercial release and you can't download it. No, you can't download it if you're not in a scene group. If you're in a scene group that's actually doing the cracking, then you can just go to these BBSs and download it. It's not like it's not like it's completely removed from download. It's just removed from CSDB. It's still available for all the cracking groups. And if you look on CSDB, it's like, what, 10,000 people belong. So there's 10,000 people that have got free access to something you're supposed to pay for. So I, I, I hate the arguments that they come up with. They're bullshit and they're, they're terrible and they're crap. And the only thing that CSDB should be promoting is the talented coders and developers that make the demos, that make the games, uh, even the ones that make the tools to a certain extent, as long as those tools aren't like Ian Coog's tools where they just dedicated to fucking ripping off other people's content um deep breath deep breath i get distracted i get distracted right what was i doing i was doing score okay let's, let's fuck it off let's go and do that okay so uh set scores okay let's let's put a little break point in here uh and use the debugger to do this see what's going on all right i get so wound up by it it's, it's really frustrating it's not a good night to piss me off tonight the the last draw for me was um making uh making a charity game a game where 100 percent of the proceeds from that game went to charity um and then cracking it fair enough they didn't release it on the site um but i knew the fact that it was cracked meant there were several versions floating around on bbs's that everybody had access to and for me that is just that's out of order they shouldn't they shouldn't even touch it they should just leave it but they're too bothered about their precious points um to not touch it so yeah Put it this way, if the cracking scene disappeared overnight, no one would miss it. No one no one would really realistically miss it. Um, the only people that would miss it would be the crackers themselves. Uh, it's not like Commodore games are super expensive. It's not like there's um, there isn't a, a, a mass of free games, way more than there used to be, uh, that come out now. Nobody would miss it. If the game stopped, then people would miss it. And that's what I can't seem to make them understand. Is that their their input to the community is almost nothing. It's it's kind of irrelevant. They they are an irrelevant force in the in the community. Um and really should just give up because they're they're not wanted at all. Um okay, let's okay, so we should be seeing a value copied into here. This is ABBA. Oh, 
And that, look, it has put something in. Was the carry flag not clear at that point? I don't think the carry flag was clear at that point. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, it's set to zero again. Something's clearing it again when we come out. Why is that? That's that's the problem here. Okay. <laughs> you just like me ranting, don't you? I would gladly do a stream one day where all I did was rant for the entire um the entire stream. Yeah, that's that's my other issue with it. A lot of the time these cracking groups they go, oh yeah, yeah, we don't we don't list it because it's not there, which is bad, wrong because they're still available for download for thousands of people. Um, but they don't even they don't even put credit of who's actually done it in it at all. If it helps them rant away, nah, I'm fine. I don't want it to be a ranty stream. I may, uh, depending on when it happens, I may do a stream next week where I'm just playing stuff from my 3090. Um, it's queued. I'm in queue position five. It's what I last heard on Thursday. So I think I'm, I think I'm due, or it might be Friday, actually. I can't remember. I think I'm due it fairly soon. So um, when it comes, uh, I'm going to install it. It shouldn't take too long. I just need to drain the blue side of this loop. Um, and then I might do, I might do a stream where I just play stuff on it. So I got a lot of traffic from cracks to be fair. You can still have a game, a game without your big logo. Yeah. And that, that's, <laughs> yeah. Thank Thank you, Doxter. Thanks for the bits, dude. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if, if it was a case of they cracked it. And then that was it. But the, the, you realise that when they crack your game, even if they've had to pay fifty pounds for it, let's say you let's say you make a game and it's the best game in the world, and it's taken you ten years to make, and you've put loads of money into it, so you decide I'm going to sell it for fifty pound, and all the normal people in the world say, "Yep, okay, I'm going to pay fifty pounds for it." The problem is, is one cracker will buy it. One cracker will buy it, and they will put it on the BBS. They will. They will extract whatever files they need and they will put it on the B the crack scenes bbs's and then everybody's got access to it absolutely everybody who uses those bbs's has access to a free version of that file if you get 20 cracking groups cracking your game you're not getting 20 cracking groups cracking your game because 20 have paid for it you're getting 20 cracking groups cracking it because one person has paid for it and shared it with everybody else Your mission to encourage the community to make C zero is already somewhat successful. Your influence has multiplied the output of others. Yeah, and that's that's really what I want to do, and I, I'm I'm pleased that that is um, I, I'm pleased that that has become um, uh, kind of I, I'm I'm glad that that has happened. That is exactly what I wanted to do when I uh, when I started this, uh, and that's exactly what seems to be happening. So I'm really pleased with that. What did I, oh did you know that? Yeah, you guys you guys have been pumping the games out. It's really good. Yeah. Anyway, right. Let's uh, let's crack on with this. Uh, okay. So something else is clearing the scores afterwards. I'm not sure what that is. So. Um, let's just have a look through. Initialize, set scores, update. Color the meter, update eat meter. Initialize eat meter. Color the meter. Oh, here we go. Okay, okay, so we should probably do this after the update because the update is actually resetting the score if the player joins in. Um,
Okay, so let's try. God, I, I, I feel like I've done nothing tonight. I've just been so angry about things. What the hell? Okay, so 7800 is what I want to see at the bottom. Okay, so we've definitely got something, because you can see here it has actually changed things. So what I want to do is just go and have a look at C3C0. Uh, and it has changed things by adding DC. Uh, oh, what has it done here, actually? Uh, okay, what is that value then? What is the value that's in the zero page here? So, uh, let's have a search for this. Uh, so AE, okay. So I'm look at AE. No, wrong file. Ah, oh, right. Okay, so... Seven eight zero zero. Okay, so for some reason it's giving me the ASCII versions. Okay, that's fine. That means all we need to do in, in here and this bit down here, instead of adding DC, we're going to add DC minus three zero. I don't know why that is. There's probably some clever reason from months ago why that is happening but it seems like that's probably going to fix our issue now so i accept piracy they're not lost sales yeah and i to a certain extent i i agree with that what i don't agree with is when they claim to be um uh they, they claim to we need to make sure that the reset works properly they claim to not be sharing the the thing. They 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 claim not to be encouraging piracy as well. Um, but every time I say no, no, because you you put this on your BBSs and you share it with everybody on your BBSs, um, they never they never accept that. They just they they dance around it and they won't accept because they know I'm right. They know that what I'm saying is exactly correct. That they take a paid project, one person pays for it, and they they deliberately put it somewhere that gives access to tens of thousands of other seniors to to do it and yeah sure they might not um ever buy the uh they might not have ever bought the game but um to just kind of deny or, or or not acknowledge that that's going on pisses me off and yeah the credit thing is annoying as well so the number of times i've seen work by other people go on the site and then it will say uh, code by and it will have the it will have the, the the hacker's name on it it's like well that's not they haven't made that that's not them making it uh okay so what i want to do now is i want to just do the same level twice to see if the score updates properly uh between multiple levels uh and then i am going to take another quick break i think <laughs> yeah i am i am kind of i am kind of worked up It's a combination of many, many things, so it's uh, it's fine. Uh, oh, there was a listen there. What was the listen for? Oh, follow. Uh, thank you for the follow, Glopper. Glop has Glop. Welcome to the stream. I like that name. It's got a kind of Glop has Glop, almost kind of like a, a Dr. Seuss kind of name, kind of feel about it. Mr. Speaker, anyway, you got me addicted to what going because you're such a good teacher. That's really rare. Teaching is hard. The C64 seems quick to label anyone looking to learn as a lemon. Yeah, I, and that's my that's the big problem I've got with lemon. Uh, made me stop trying to learn back in the day. Cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you do feel that way. That's exactly what um, exactly what we're trying to do um, with this community is to just stop making people feel like they aren't good enough when they want to learn things. Give them the tools they need to learn. And just leave it there. Stop having a go at people because they're, they're not as clever as you are. The chances are they're probably cleverer than you. Um, it's just that they, don't, they haven't been taught to that level yet. 
Uh, thanks for the follow, Zachimon. Uh, welcome to the stream, dude. It feels fine. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine, Carlton. It's it's honestly, it's it's fine. Okay, this is this is all good now. Okay, so okay, so we we've, we've got we've got levels that are working. Let me stick another level in here. Uh, oops. Oh my god. There we go. Uh rest of time an issue on the hood on the demo level. Yeah, I spotted that as well. Um it's just on that one character which is weird. I don't know why. Um Oh, rest of issue on the hood. Oh, you mean this bit here underneath the switch? Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but... Uh, it's probably because this is using a multicolor and that's being set at the wrong time, which is probably an easy fix anyway, but... Um, in fact, let's let's try and fix that because that would be a nice thing to sort out. Because uh, it looks like the yellow, which is a multicolor, because it's a multicolor being used here, is being changed far too early. So let's go in the IRQ and have a go at that. Then while we're here, let's close some of these other things down. In fact, you know what? I'm going to take a quick break, guys. When I come back, I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll carry on. Do you ever do co-op streams? Yeah, that would be that would be kind of cool. I think we talked a little bit about this um, doing uh, doing some collaborative stream. Oh, that's a point. I haven't even put flu bits on tonight. So I use this tool called Flu Bits, um, which allows you to kind of follow the code as I go along. Um, but it's a very good um, uh, overwrite remote files. It, it would be a very good tool for doing collaborative stuff together that would be kind of cool um uh vaping and smoking no just i'm just vaping but i am going to go outside and just grab some fresh air because it's really warm in here um so i will put the uh i will put the uh races on i'll take a quick break and i'll come back uh and we'll carry on we'll fixing a few bugs here and there and try not to get distracted by being angry with things. <laughs> Just me at home chatting with Sharon's for straight without talking more. <laughs> okay. No, I'd I'd like to do I'd like to do a code call up at some point. That would be really interesting to to do a stream where we can get we can get kind of the code scene coders together. But I want to say the game, you know, our community coders, the people who are doing uh, community community coding together, um, and build something on stream. Because we could all work on separate bits together, so that'd be kind of cool. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Bring it back. I thought I'd give it a go. It's not kickoff, though, is it? What is it? Kick on. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. No one would have got that. These quizzes don't work if your stream is 15 seconds behind. Yeah, I realise that. There's not a lot I can do about that, unfortunately. What did you say? Did you say... Did you say Adidas football? Did anybody say Adidas football? All right, I will. It might actually count for it. I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, also, now I'm, I'm doubting.
isn't it from Adidas, Adidas, whatever. There we go. Uh, okay, where was he at? Let's get some, let's finish this booze off. I spent most of my time up there sorting out my freaking curtain. I've not got an awful lot of alcohol left. Tell them. Uh, tell them a little bit annoyed. Right. Um, I've completely forgot what I was doing there. I did say before I left, and now I've come back, I can't remember at all. Oh, the flicker on the bottom. Okay. Oh, yeah, Andy, my tonight flicker. Thank you. If there was anything, it'd run away the most amazing budget game. Uh, nothing worse than getting really hungry at 1am. Uh, yeah, fixing the raster. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, ooh, the question is, where the hell have I put that then? Of course, it's in here. So it's going to be the multi -class. It's going to be D022 or D023, and it's just been set at the wrong time. Uh, so I just need to figure out where that is. So it's this bit here. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Andy. Appreciate it. Cheers. So the screen shape going on here. I wonder if I just move it. If I just move it from there to there, is that going to be enough? Because all that's really going to do is change the cycle where it's going to happen. <laughs> I love this tune. Uh, gameplay size, the last V8, a good bit of coding for its time. Um, I'd, I'd say yes, it's it's interesting. Um, it was it was definitely doing stuff. No, it's still flickering, isn't it? That's interesting. It seems to be it's it's not consistent. Why is my why is he showing us player two and this is showing us player one? I swapped. I pressed swap joysticks at some point. That's better. No, it's still flickering there. Okay, so we could try moving this all the way to the end of here. Uh, oh, actually, it's not because this is set in the pipe color back, so it's not that one. It's it's the other side of it, which is this one here. But why is it setting it to light blue here? But I think that is the right place. I think if I move this... I just move this all the way down here. It's probably going to be fine. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So I, I think the thing with raster flicker is, is back in the day, back in the eighties, um, it really didn't matter because the fact that games could even do two things in different areas of the screen is, is um was good enough so so actually spending time solving raster flicker was probably not as uh probably not as important as it is nowadays uh where where actually we're looking for kind of that polished feel to everything so oh my god it's super sensitive how close you get to things
No. This level's quite a lot of oh, fun to play, I say that as I, as I die. It's hard, though. So is cola bottles. They're actually quite tricky once they start falling down places like this. Because you have to keep an eye out where they're going to drop to. Like here, that one's going to drop there. So. Cool. The color bottle made the door button depress. Yeah, it does. It it will. Uh, any enemy that walks over the over the button will make it uh, will make it depress down a little bit. The sausage bean is the best enemy. <laughs> it's the easiest one, that's for sure. Okay, that's an interesting... So we haven't got a debounce on the jump, so that means that here... Oh, no, that's actually probably correct. But you end up stuck in here, so this is probably not an ideal, an ideal construct because you you you're basically partly stuck sometimes, like here. So you may have to change this, and maybe just take the middle one out here or something. Yeah, that that's kind of problematic. Who put this on? I only just realised. Warlock. <laughs> oh my god, now I've got to go all the way back down. Actually, this, this level will be fun for... Uh, and if this makes me go all the way back up... Oh my god. <laughs> this level will be fun for two players, definitely. The whole race will be, will be kind of cool. But that's just mean. What's the current state of the music becoming? The music's all done. The music's in there. I just it's just not been turned on. I don't want to, to keep hearing the music over and over again because it'll put me off it. It doesn't matter how good the music is if you keep hearing the same bit over and over again. All right. It's crashing because there's no other levels. We've got to the end of the levels, so that's fine. Um Okay, let's uh, let's have a look again. So I'm going to try putting both players on now. I just want to check the scores for both players when when the level is finished. So I'm going to eat the the enemy with this player, but I'm going to keep the ground coloured with the other player. So okay that's the next thing we need to fix the door entry the door entry is completely screwed up there so the crown is awarded so we also expect these enemies to be reset so we need to check first of all that the scores are correct so 700 and 12250 that this player has the crown and that both players are skinny again on the next level so both players are skinny. This one has the crown. The scores are correct. Cool. Um, oh, you see that? Oh, what's going on there? There's no multiplexing, so I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, the sprite update's happening too late. Ah. Okay. The entertainer should play on a hidden level. Oh, crap. That's annoying. That is annoying. Um, the sprite positions are set too late. And so things are disappearing. That's kind of an important one. We need to fix that. Okay, so let's have a look at the game loop. Uh, 
I mean, it's happening here. Or is it happening there? Maybe it's not. Uh, let's let's do this. Let's just get onto that level. Cabal, who got that? Steps got that in record time again. Jesus Christ. So this is where draw player is happening on this level. So let's see what happens if I start to mess around with things a little bit. It may be just that I just need to move that to uh, a different place. That's interesting. So I could start the second player as... Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, oh, look at that. Why is it happening so late sometimes? Okay. Um, that's interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one around the soft sprites as well. Because uh, I want to see where this is happening as well. It could be that we just need to shift some stuff around a little bit, which is fine. So the first one is where the sprite updates are happening. And then this is where the uh, the player draw is happening. And you can see with two players, on, it actually changes quite a bit. Um, Fact, you can't even see the other one. Let me put the debug borders on. Yeah, it's shifting. It's shifting down. This this one here is shifting. So the entry into this is taking too long. And that is to do with this. Is it just the complete frame is too long, maybe? Is this, maybe this is just, maybe the whole thing is just taking too long. Oh shit, that's not good. Because if that's the case, we're going to have to stagger some of these updates. Okay, let's... Let's see how long the whole thing takes, including the music. Maybe it's just too long. <laughs> okay, Merry Christmas in October. Okay, so this the, the white area is what our update loop is. Certainly adding a second player in does change that and actually spamming changes that quite a lot as well. So maybe we need to do some optimization. Oh my God, this is a bit late into the game to be noticing this. Fuck. Okay. It is the the frame times overlapping. Ah oh, shit. Okay. Yep. 
yeah, it will be one of enemy behaviors. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. Okay, let's let's figure out what's what's taking the most time on this. Okay, so It's going to be enemy behaviors. It's definitely going to be enemy behaviors. Fucking hell. All right. That's uh, frustrating, but not impossible. Let's have a look and see what, what color is the biggest in this. So, so obviously, sh spamming this is obviously going to increase it, uh, which we know about. But we've also got quite a big area in red here. Um which is the player area okay so something in here is potentially taking a lot of time let's uh let's complete the level and and have a look so that that's definitely one area that i think we need to to work on is reducing the red area so that's the player area let's have a look on this screen Fuck no, it's just I'm not enjoying tonight at all. So again, yeah, red is quite big. Purple is huge. Look how big purple's going now. Okay, red and purple are definitely issues, and if I do this, it's gonna go mental. Yeah, okay. You can see it's not breaking the it's not breaking the IRQ stuff down here, so that's at least one thing. It's it's not a game breaking bug, but it does create this horrible flicker which we don't want. Um, purple. Okay, so yeah, it is update enemies. <sighs> okay, so uh. Okay, update enemies is... I'm trying to think why that would be so heavy, because that is incredibly heavy. I mean, that's not... That's a lot of... Uh, a hell of a lot, actually, of frame time for that. Is it the collisions? Maybe it's a collision thing. Okay, well now we know that. Let's let's go and let's trim this all down. See if we can get that smaller. Okay, because this is a this is a well as I say, it's not game breaking bug, but I really don't want that glitch in there if I can help it. So update enemies. Okay, so update enemies is actually in itself quite a small function. But it's calling the behaviors, which is probably the the heavy thing here. Um, so let's do let's do this. Let's um, first of all let's have a look at the the map in here, so we can see what the Yeah, the play section does seem quite big as well. I need to check that out. There's there's obviously something weird going on here. Uh I'm not entirely sure what it is, but we'll 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 check that out as well in a second. Um Yeah, because it shouldn't be that much. It really shouldn't be that much. Even with all the collision checks and everything, it shouldn't be that much.
Okay, so what I'm going to do, first of all, um, is I'm going to, before we check that, I'm going to do all my, my color things in there. I'm going to work on the enemy bits first. Uh, thanks for the follow, Akarin Tari. Thanks for the follow, dude. What's with all the Christmas tunes? Who keeps picking these? Who needs to pick that? Steps. Are you enjoying Christmas or something? Steps is too early, yeah. God, now I'm getting cold. Okay, so we do a call behavior and we do a check player collision. So what I'm going to do I'm going to see if which half of this is is problematic. It could be that the player collision is too much. So let's just see what it looks like. So we'll just start with one enemy. So as soon as this enemy comes out. Okay, so the behavior is quite big. Um, but the check play collision looks fairly small. Let's add another. Okay, that hasn't really added anything to it. But it has increased the, the player check, obviously. Um, Okay, so the player collision isn't too bad, but the the um, the behavior itself is big, though. Okay, so that's one area. Let's just check the, the collision. Maybe we can shrink it down a little bit. So, okay, so this is doing that. Uh, okay, this is quite a lot of code, but this is just doing it for checking one enemy against, yeah, why is the current enemy against both players? All right, let's, let's, I'll tell you what, let's start with the player. Let's come back to it, because I think the behaviors is, is a whole thing that we need going to have to spend a bit of time doing. Damn it. I don't know why that level in particular seemed to show more than the other levels. I think we've just got very lucky with it, to be honest. Uh, okay, so let's do some checks on this. So let's see which is the, the slow piece here. So. Uh, the, no, unfortunately the, the player at the bottom wrap round would just be hiding, um, hiding the sprite. It's not actually going to change the way it wraps around. Um, it's just, all, all we're doing is just hiding the sprite in a better way. So this third section of the uh, enemy is, of the player is the most player get collisions. This is by far the biggest area, so maybe just the collision routines are, are inefficient, which is not surprising. Collision is is a tricky thing to do uh, correctly. So, okay, because yeah, look at look at that. I had two players. It's huge that section. So let's let's have a look at player get collision. See if we can shrink that down a little bit. sake 
my patience is really going tonight. I don't know why. So this is the function that's being called. And this has got a couple of functions that do get called out Cyrus. So get collision point is one. Uh, get character at is another. Get collision point does this. Okay, well, first of all, we can we can turn these into tail calls. So I can just do a jump here and a jump here. It's not really going to save as many many points, but it will uh, many cycles, but it will do something at least. Um, and something that's called that often, it's going to save us a line or two. Now, <sighs> utils get collision point. All right, let's go and have a look at that. This sounds like freestyler. Yeah, it is. The best dance tune to ever come out of Finland. Filmed in um, Helsinki's Helsinki Airport uh, train station, I believe. <laughs> um okay utils get collision points so i think yeah see look there's a there's a lot of stuff going on in here every single time <laughs> oh. Hmm. It's doing a lot of checks here. This uh, okay. This is a lot of code. Uh, really not in the mood for this at all. Okay, so is there a way I could avoid doing this every time? Agonite Duck. Is the distance calc taken? No, there's no distance calculation in this. I'm going to code for another hour and then I'm just going to go to bed. I think I think I just need to sleep it off. Um, I need to try and find a way to optimize this. Uh, thing is, I, I put these helper functions in and then it's turned out that actually they're being used loads and loads and loads and loads. And so now that it's in a situation where, look, get collision point, get character, get collision point, get character. And it's like, This is the problem, this get collision point. I, I, I'm pretty sure if I was just to do an RTS here, I mean, obviously it's going to break things, um, but we'll we'll probably see that that, um, that time is, is a lot less, like a hell of a lot less. So the majority of that, that time is spent doing that. Yeah, look, look at this, look at the difference now, right? So with two players, it's kind of it's this much, and then if I if I put the RTS back in, get rid of that. Sorry.
Why is that not loading now? What the hell? Look at the difference. It's like double the size by doing that get collision point. So <sighs> okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this sensibly, right? So if I'm getting a position here, I'm changing X. But I'm not changing any of the other values. So do I need to actually do anything with A and Y at this point? Can I can I jump in and, and do something different? So if we have a look in here, I'm only changing X. I'm not changing the other values, right? So Tools get collision point. So actually, none of this has changed. Player position is the same. So none of this has changed. All that's changed is this value here. Okay. So we'd be better off storing X in here and then jump into this position instead because nothing else has changed. So let's try doing that. Let's see if it breaks player one. So before I continue, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save what I'm at before I make a mess of this. I can't even be asked putting a commit message in. That's, that's how little I care about it today. I'm just going to put the letter Q in. That's all I can be bothered with. Apologize, guys. Anything you can nab from check noise collision work? No, not really. I mean, it's pretty much the same functionality. It's, I, part of the problem is, is because um, in check noise, it's quite simple. I'm just, I'm just treating it as a kind of box that I'm trying to fit into places. In this, it's a little bit different because I have to check each foot depending on, on where you are, so you can fall off uh, properly. So, uh, unfortunately, no. Um, but I think what I can do is I can simplify some of these calls. So, for instance, I do this collision lookup here, and then the only thing I change is this value in X, and then I call get collision point again. But what I could do is instead of doing this, I could take this value and store that directly in the place that this would store it in, which is this point here. Uh, like so. And then I can jump to utils get collision point. So I'm actually, the second time I do this, I get to bypass this function completely. Um, I get to bypass all of this because I don't need to do this. These values are set up again. I probably don't even need to do a lot of what's in here. So I'm going to go and have a look at that now as well. Um, Uh, thank you for the follow, Spectrum13. Welcome to the stream, dude. Oh, my God, this is Spice Girls. I see. Yeah, hold on. Not that I know this, dude. 
Okay, I think that's going to help a little bit. So let me let me go through and make those changes where I can uh, in the player. Um, because that will save a little bit. It's not going to save an awful lot, but it will save a little bit. And we probably can do the same thing with the enemies as well. So, so basically what I'm doing here is anytime I only have to change one small part, then that's all I'm going to do. So... So I'm looking for these get collision points and looking for differences. And you can see I'm doing it again here. I'm setting these values and calling get collision point. Whereas what I could be doing is just doing this. And I think that should be the same. So I'm going to test this in a second. Um, See, what's that one doing? That's got a completely different edge. That's got a difference in Y here as well. But again, the player hasn't changed position. So actually, I probably sh shouldn't do this on any of these. This is still player one, right? Oh, I'm just going to equal to here. Okay, so if player one is active, then we go to here. So this is all player one, right? So once I've done this once, I actually don't need to do it again. All I need to do is change the odd piece here and there and, and call this. So the next time I come down here, I don't need to do this either. Uh, I just need to change the values that I'm interested in, um, which in this case, accumulator has stayed the same and Y has changed. So. Y has become 11, and where does that go? I really like this, this version, this is kind of cool. Okay, so I, I can keep doing this throughout this, this file as long as I'm still on player one because it's only ever checking against player one details. And I only need to change the things that actually change from the last time I called it, which is that in this case, uh, that in this case, uh, left collision box is the same. So so that actually doesn't need to change. Whoops. Okay, and that that's the that's just on the left hand side. So that that's several calls to the left hand side that are now working, and it's the same on this side. It's still the same player. It doesn't matter. We don't we don't need to do this. So I can cancel that out, and all I need to do is change the values on this side, which become. That okay. Which means this one can be removed as well and replaced with player right collision box is the same, so that doesn't change, so it's just that one. And that's player one. So let's give that a let's give that a try, make sure it all still works. Damn, that is a lot of SIDs. Okay, I mean, it's not made a huge difference, uh, but let's get to the next level and, and just check that the collision still actually works. Seems to be doing. There might be some, some, sort, uh, some short circuits we can make as well. It could be that we're we're testing too much at this point and we don't need to. Oh. Oh no, there we go. Was... Wait, there is there does seem to be a point. There is some point at which one of the enemy behaviors is 
taking too much. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Which enemy behavior is it? There's one particular enemy behavior here which is causing an issue. Because other than that, it's, it doesn't look too bad. If they haven't moved, you don't need to check feet. Well, in, in theory, if they haven't moved, I don't need to check collision at all, really. It's only if you want to move that it should check collision. Um, but I, I think there's something else going on here. Because if you look, right, generally, enemies are moving across the screen. Things are fine. And it's just occasionally they, they cross over, and I don't know what it is that's doing it. Oh, maybe, yeah. No, not always, though. Look, it's... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, right. Um... I'm going to finish off because uh, those collisions kind of looked all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy this kind of behavior to the, uh, to the other player now as well, because it, it's worth doing just because it's going to save us, uh, ton, tons of, uh, space. So, uh, tons of cycles, if not, uh, not enough quite, but, um, it is going to save us some. So now we switch to the other player. So we, we need to do it once at the beginning. So we'll do it here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through um, I'm going to go through the enemy behaviors. And I'm going to call it each enemy behavior differently. Whoops. Uh, so we can see which enemy behavior is suddenly taking longer than the others, and hopefully get somewhere from that. Okay. So one, uh, whatever x is twenty three. Okay. So both need doing at this point. Okay. <laughs> Bit of Luna. It's a really, really good tune. You should be really proud of this step. It's awesome. Okay, so play a collision box on this one. Don't need that one. Oh god. Yeah, this is this is Steps music. It's very cool as well. He's, he's hit the nail right on the head with this tune. It works perfectly for the game. I'm going to leave the commented code in just because if there is a problem, I want to be able to quickly compare it against it. Um, I'm making some quite drastic changes here that probably should um, be properly tested before I, I, I say it's working. So um, I, I just want to make sure that I've got some older code to look at just to make sure. Um, but I think this is right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take those um, those colours out here uh, because we know that the player is kind of heavy and there's a lot of collision checks going on. But there's something odd about the behaviours and I'm not entirely sure what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into each behaviour. So we've got uh, three enemy types on this level. 
Uh, so for each of these enemy types, uh, which is Coldabottle is one. In the on update here, I'm going to store a color. Uh, thank you for the follow, Dweezer81. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, and then in enemies, call behavior, update enemies, call behavior. Whatever that is here. Uh, uh, so we've got the jelly bean as well. So I'm going to make the jelly bean... Uh, Cyan. And then what do we have? The flying boiled sweet, that's it. There we go. Make that purple. Right, now there could there could potentially be overlap with these, uh, but hopefully it will draw a, a a tiny black line between them so we can see if there is some overlap. Um oh. I mean, technically you're right, Hayes, but which one? I think I know which one it is. I'm going to have a guess. I'm going to have a guess. No, no, <laughs> fuck. Oh, my God, Ace of Base, seriously. So, actually, Jelly Bean is taking quite a lot. This is just one Jelly Bean, and look how much, look how much he's taking. Now, it is quite a lot. Let's have a look what happens when we when we go on this level. Let's just keep an eye on these colours and see which ones are expanding the most when they drop down and stuff. So actually the jelly bean is taking a lot. The jelly bean is taking more than maybe the cola balls as well here. Jelly bean charge. Ah oh, yeah, maybe. Hang on, let's No, I didn't seem to change much either. But again, there's efficiencies that we can make in the behaviors. So let's have a look at those. In fact, I tell you what, I'm going to take another break, guys. Um, I think quiz should be after race more interesting to discuss. Yeah, true. Maybe. Uh, I mean, you can have another race now because I'm going to go for a quick break. Um, I just need to get my head together a little bit. Um, but, I, okay, I think this is probably what's going to be the next stream or two is going to be... Uh, I'll I'll do the compression off, off stream. I will talk about what I've done to get that to work. But then I will um, probably spend the next stream or two going through optimizing things. All right. I'll be back in five minutes, guys. I'll leave you with a break. Be right back. Right. <laughs> Never heard of that either. It didn't look like a Halcyon. That looked like Halcyon sounds like a space game. Okay. So as I say, while 
this doesn't actually cause a break in the game. It does cause a flicker, and I really don't like having the flicker there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a jelly bean. And I'm going to look through the update and see if we can see something that might be causing um, those issues. And remove anything we don't need. So the first thing we probably don't need is the set enemy colour because the, the enemy colour is already set in the on spawn, so we don't need that. Has hit projectile, okay. Um Okay, I'm gonna need the enemy macros on this side, aren't I? Check versus projectiles, okay. Okay, so there's quite a bit of checking going on here, but actually, let's have a look, what's it doing? So it's checking, see if the projectile is active, taking the enemy position, I mean, we can't really make that much quicker. It's kind of doing... Oh, well, there's, a, there's a push and a pull here. I mean, we could save a little bit of time by replacing these. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's create... Um, let's create... Uh, I'm going to call it behave stack one. I mean, it's, it's not really what it is, but... Um, We're going to use it like that anyway. And this is only going to save us a couple of cycles. Not really not much at all. Um, it's like six cycles, I think, for something for that. So, uh, see, we do it here as well. So actually, we can we can save a bit more here. So um, let's let's have a look at this again. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so let's make another behave stack here. Two. Actually, let's call it X and Y because then it's going to match what we're doing in here. Okay, so for this one, we'll just use behave stack X. But then here, what we can do. Is we can do store x behave stack x store y behave stack y and that saves us doing all of those uh, and then likewise on this bit here we can just say load x behave stack x load y behave stack y okay so that's a few cycles saved there uh and there's no more at this point. Okay. But this is only when we collide. So that's probably not a problem. Uh, and actually check versus projectiles is probably not a problem because if we're not throwing anything, then this, this is not happening. And we're, I'm definitely seeing, uh, I'm definitely seeing some large areas without throwing anything, lar large kind of problems without throwing anything. So so let's ignore that one for now. I think we've done a little bit of a change in there, but uh, do fall. Okay, so do fall has to actually check beneath us. Um, now, this is interesting because if a jelly bean has stopped falling, then he can't fall off a platform anymore. So when this happens, we can snap it to a thing. So let, let's try this. Let's let's add a value in here. Let's call uh, let's call it hit floor. Let's make it zero one, and let's set that to zero. So now we're only going to do this do fall check if. 
if this is zero. So first of all, let's just run this and let's have a look at roughly what the uh, thing is. Thank you, Otter Otter, for the follow. Welcome to the stream, dude. Um, and Dweezer81, if I missed that, I may have missed that. Okay, so we're looking at the cyan piece here, uh, which we can test on the first level quite easily because we do have a jelly bean on here. So, so we can kind of look at that. Let's take a rough guess at what that is. I mean, if I line it up here, it's yeah. I mean, it's taking three lines of our ID up roughly. So let's see if we can shrink this down by messing around with things. So one of the things it's doing is it's doing this do fall check all the time. So we can we can change that by putting a little check in here. So if we get our static memory, if I can do that from here, uh, like so, and that will be in the accumulator, right? So what I'm going to do is So that's been loaded into the accumulator. So now what I can say is, okay, um, I don't need to, hang on. Uh, what does do for, hang on, I need to check what do fall actually returns if we're falling. Do fall SR, okay, fall, set carry flag return. Okay, so if the carry flag is set, then we're falling. If the carrier flag is clear, then we go to here. So, uh, plan should not equal here because we don't do the. We're not going to do the fall. Otherwise, we're at this point and we are doing the fall. Okay, let's see if that makes any difference. So that's what we're looking at at the moment. So let's just take a screenshot out. We can actually compare it then. It doesn't really matter if it's the full thing or not. Uh, I'd like it to be 100% though, not... Is that 100% or is that... No, it's 100%. Okay, so that's what we're trying to compare against. This is a very unscientific method, but fuck it. I don't care anymore. Uh, heads of interest. Oh, yeah, there you go. Somebody already posted it. Can Vice do timing? It can do timing, yeah, but um, I'm not going to bother too much for now. I think we should see a quite visible difference if, we've, if I've made a change. Yeah, see, there you go. That has made a few lines of difference already just by doing that. It's not a lot, but it has made a little bit of a difference. Uh, and it doesn't affect this because once it hits the floor, it's hit the floor. So you can see there it's it's quite a bit. So, okay, so let's, uh, let's take a screenshot of that area. Uh, and we'll use this as a comparison. So once once i get this down to uh kind of fine tuning things then i'll start looking at timing but this is just a lot quicker than um uh, than that so what what you can do is you can for instance if i go in i mean i'll i'll show you i'll show you how the timing works we can we can do we can do an exact example so um so if i take the jelly bean in here and I just get rid of this this piece of code here, uh, this piece of code here. So these are the two lines that I've added in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint up here at the beginning of the update, and then another breakpoint down here at the exit. Actually, uh, yeah, there we go. And then what you can do is when the when the uh, thing actually starts, are all the platforms only at certain Y values? Can you cool it down to that? Uh, oh, you mean for collision checks? 
that's kind of what we're doing anyway. We're we're converting from sprite to um, uh, we're converting from sprite to uh, character space anyway. So we're kind of doing that anyway. So if I just if I just do this a few times till the sprite comes out. Okay, so there we go. The sprite's on the floor. So this is the beginning of the routine. So if I do SW reset here, so I reset the stopwatch and I press go and I do SW, it tells me how many cycles it took. So it's saying it took 1858. Okay, so let's go. Let's try that again. One eight five eight. So it's taken about eighteen hundred and fifty eight cycles. So now if I go back in here and I put um our code back in. Uh so this line, this line here. I still need to think about doing that. I do want to do that Arcanoid clan. I just got to get the time to do it and the, the motivation. Um, I'm so tired at the moment and quite grumpy today, apparently. Okay, so here we are again at this. Okay, so let's do the same again. So 1858 is what we had before. And now we're down to 1611. So we've saved about 240 cycles, which is about four lines. Um, and actually, I think that will, uh, if anything, it will improve. Uh, one six one one. No, it's about the same actually. Okay, but we've we've you know we've shaved off a small percentage of that, um, which we we can kind of see in here as well. Which is why I'm just taking the screenshot because it's just a little bit easier just to to sneak it in here instead of instead of pissing around with different. Uh, setting somewhere so i can just use this as a comparison um uh, uh, uh steps show only notices when you win what right who got that one i didn't see who got that one oh hey he's got it okay I notice what I notice is I notice whoever wins when I'm looking at it. It's just most of the time that happens to be steps. <laughs> That's not my fault. That's your fault for not being as good as steps. So, okay, let's have another go at, at things. To be fair, it's it's fairly close between steps and haze anyway i think i think i i might put i might actually create a leaderboard and do um like a monthly leaderboard or something the winner at the end of the month gets a a big bonus or something don't know i'll, I'll have a think about it i need to i need to do it but it'd be nice to have a little leaderboard that you guys could be uh, that you guys could uh take a look at Okay, so so that's one thing. The other thing is, is do we really need to snap the enemy to the floor over and over again? We don't, right? So, um, let's have a look at what snap enemy to floor is doing. Mm, okay, it's it's not that bad. I mean, this is not that many cycles, and it would be a shame to kind of start putting checks around this because actually probably just end up being worse than than anything so uh unlimited guesses would be fun if anyone if someone gets there nobody's got their own game so far everybody seems to everybody seems to get stuff incorrect every time somebody should really get the game they haven't maybe half the points for it ah, that's not a bad idea actually just to so you can have more than one guess but i had to think about that because there's something kind of nice about somebody thinking it's either a or b going for a and it turns out to be b and then having to just keep quiet <laughs> To 
two guesses in case of typo. Yeah. What if the points decrease as the image gets clearer? That's not a bad one. Yeah, the haze, that would kind of go in the same thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'll have a think about that. That's that's not a bad idea. It would complicate the, the high scoreboard a little bit. I mean, I guess I could do the high score based on the points that you won or something. Um, so that if two people had the same number of correct guesses, uh, the correct, like one, the, the same number, then it would come down to kind of who guessed quicker than the other or something. I kind of like that, yeah. Good ideas, everyone. Yeah, but it's not not bad. I, I might have a go at doing that this week if I get time. Okay, so this is now checking if a player is in range. So um, this could potentially be slow. So let's turn this off and see if that makes a difference. Um, Andy mentioned it to the charging, which isn't exactly what's happening here, but it is based on that kind of thing. So. Um, if we just cancel that out completely and have a look, because I'm not too fussed if we remove that. Um, I, I kind of like it that it does that, but um, if it's going to slow it down a lot, then I don't mind removing some stuff. Um, <laughs> I'll get AI to an answer, yeah. <laughs> turn, turn DLSS on, <laughs> just just for that little square in the corner. Oh shit! I need to turn those breakpoints off now. But let's let's do the let's do the check on here as well. All right, so okay, it only saves about hundred, a uh, hundred pixel, a uh, hundred uh, cycles, which isn't a lot. I mean, it's it's just over one line. It's like one and a one and two thirds lines. So actually, I'm gonna put that back. I don't think that's a huge problem. Um, so let's let's put a breakpoint here so we can see at this point how many cycles have we used so far <laughs> has anyone tried to squint their eyes why would squinting your eyes make it look look better it's going to make it look worse <laughs> you're, you're taking you're taking a, a distorted view and distorting it even more of course it's not going to work that's crazy thing crazy talk okay right so let's try from here okay so set go let's have a look so we're using only 246 cycles up to this point and then okay so it would appear that the majority of our cycles are being used at the end. So let's have a look. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the majority of our cycles are happening after this other breakpoint here. So it's probably to do with these collisions. This is probably what it is. Let's, let's have a look. So, yeah, none of this would be. I mean, let's take a break point here. Well, I don't think that's going to be the problem. I think it's the collision stuff. I think that's the problem. Errol sensitive sunglasses. Isn't that um Zaphod Beeblebrox had them, didn't he? In uh in uh Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They went completely black when things got dangerous. Which I think is is genius. 
if all you're looking after is number one, then all you really care about is do you feel scared? So all hell could be breaking loose as long as you can't see it. What does it matter? Yeah, okay. So it I it looks like it's to do with this collision because that's roughly about a thousand cycles to handle the collision in the middle. Which means given any direction that it's walking in, it's probably to do with this. So if I if I just get rid of that, what happens? I'm gonna get rid of the breakpoints now because counting it in that way is a bit annoying, and I don't actually need to count it that way. I can I can see the obvious problem when it happens. Yeah, heart of gold. Yeah, spending a year dead for tax reasons. <laughs> yes. Oh god, I need to read that book again. I've not read it for a year. It's about time I did it again. Okay, so um, I can't figure out if that's smaller or... Oh, no, that definitely looks a bit smaller. Oops. And that's because I'm checking... I'm not checking the collision now. Um, so it's never actually going to turn around. It's just going to keep walking in, in that direction. Um, what was it? But it still feels like there's there's a huge chunk being used somewhere. That that's not that bad. Is it this maybe? Yeah, that was Red Dwarf. Outland Revenue sent Rimmer. Uh, I think for leaving the light bulb on. Or was I think it might have been Lister actually that got that got sent that, but there is something definitely big chewing cycles. I don't know what it is. I'm just trying to comment things out until I find what it is. When I first read Hitchhiker's Guide to Guys. Yeah, it is so good. You just have to read it all in one go. It's very easy to do. Oh, look at that. Look at the difference there. That is a huge difference. Okay, so obviously that means that they're not looping around properly now. Uh, we're probably going to get a weird glitch here, yeah. Um, but that is a massive difference, uh, and that is that's halved it just by not checking the screen edges. So, whatever this routine is doing is taking far too long. Okay, so it is doing lots of collision checks. Uh, okay. Check both directions and don't change if they are both blocked. Right, why was it? Oh, this was to allow things to fly up through the platforms. Something we could probably avoid. Um... Okay, right, okay. So it it is to do with the collisions. Get enemy collisions is too slow. So if I just turn this off. Um because this is only for the boiled sweets. This thing is literally just for one one thing so we, we can probably make sure that this only gets called by one thing rather than everything so let's just see what difference that makes oh where's our screenshot gone 
Did I close that freaking screenshot down? Fucking did as well. God damn it. Right, well, we'll be able to tell if it's smaller anyway. Yeah, it is. It's smaller. Okay, right. So so that's one thing. Check screen edges is here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add uh, another bit up here. Um, and I'm going to call this label basic. Uh, and then we've got check screen edges, check screen edges, basic. So in here, that's going to save us a lot of frames. Now that's going to need to be done on everything that checks screen edges. So screen edges, it's set for the boiled suite, which does need to keep it. So the other thing I want to do is I want to check this get enemy collisions. Enemies get collision point. Okay, so I'm I'm I am losing the will to do this tonight. I'm sorry guys. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> uh, okay, right, there's a push in here. We could get rid of that. That will save us a little bit, I guess. So let's do that. Um, Oh my god, you guys have queued shitloads of music. I mean, it's good that you queued Spice Girls, so that's alright. Thing is, I really want to solve this. I, I, I'm annoyed that everything has been a challenge tonight. Uh, to kind of extreme amounts. So I'm kind of frustrated by it. I don't think that's helping at all. All right, let's let's give this a, let's give this a proper go now and let's have a look. Oh god, what Christmas horror have you put on? Jesus Christ, what's with all the Christmas tunes, guys? It's October for fuck's sake. It's only just October. All right, let's let's see what happens. Let's get on to the next level. See if that's made any difference. So I really wanted to fix the door bug as well. I have a funny feeling this is going to drag on for ages, this fucking game. I'm starting to hate it. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's maybe fixed it. I'm not seeing that glitch at all now. See what happens if I start throwing. Okay, I definitely get a glitch if I start throwing. What if just one person throws? All right. But it's definitely improved the situation somewhat. Uh, and the, okay, now the glitch does move around. Oh, so Nick Hayes getting pissed off at all the Twitch horror streams. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, at least it is October. At least it is the same month. But Christmas fucking tunes in October. That's just wrong. This is definitely looking a lot better. Definitely looking a lot better. One thing I am concerned about is there's quite a huge gap between those behaviours. Like what is this what is this black area between the behaviors? Why is it such a big gap? But I'm 
I'm almost all right with that. I just want to trim it down a little bit more. Um, speaking of October, I built a coffin today. You know. <laughs> Thirty-four inch skeleton. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! Oh, Americans in Halloween. I love it. I love that. I love how you Americans take Halloween so crazy serious. It's is proper serious. It's, I've never seen anything like it. It's good though. I mean, it's a good fun kids' holiday, isn't it? So why not? Family is more than normal Americans. <laughs> okay, so we've got rid of the we've got rid of the original glitch. The jelly bean is still taking a lot. Look at that! Look at that cyan uh, block there. It's still still an awful lot. Uh, I noticed the color is wrong, so I'm going to restore the color line that we put in. But I don't think that was uh, a huge part of the problem. Um, so there is there is another thing we can do, which is we can have semi updates and full updates. So what do I mean by that? Um, and this is probably what I'm going to end up doing. What I mean by a semi update is a semi update doesn't do any of the collision, uh, doesn't do. Well, let's go and have a look at Jelly Bean, right? So a semi-update here is literally just going to do um, a frame update and a positional update, and that's it. Uh, Jelly Bean also goes through the hood more than other enemies. What's all the black between the colors? Yeah, I'm going to have a look at that in a minute. So the way this would work is in the update here, um, you would do a check. Uh, you would you would check your enemy number, uh, which is in X, um, against the timer. Uh, and if the if the bottom bit of the timer and the bottom bit of your enemy match, then you do a full update. Otherwise, you jump to a semi update, and the semi update would literally just do um, exit if stunned. Uh, update position uh, and update frame wherever that is a position enemy so it would just do all the very basic things it would just continue doing what it was doing on the last frame so it would just continue to do what it was doing on the last frame um, basically effectively creating um, a, a, a a 25 frame per second update but a 50 frame per second interpolated screen update so the actual logic update would happen on alternate frames um then that would mean that you you're only updating half the enemies every frame so you would save half the rest of time so um oh let's have a look at that Holy shit. <laughs> God, God damn it, you guys. Oh, America. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that, that is a potential fix. I'm not going to do that this, this stream, though, but I, I think that is potentially a good idea um, to do on the next next stream. Because if you think about it, the collision doesn't need to be every single frame if we just kind of separate it out a little bit so we're only doing the collisions um every other frame in fact like we can do a very basic version of it here right so um let's let's just do it in the jelly bean for now and let's have a look so if we look at the jelly bean in here look how big this this cyan block is right we're going to try and reduce that down and what we're going to do is we're going to see it we're going to see it flicker between a small amount and a big amount and that's what I want you to focus on is the, the amount of time we're going to save by, by doing this. So the way I'm going to do this, uh, I'm just going to create a, a value in here. 
Uh, and then right at the beginning of this this thing, I'm going to take uh, transfer X to the accumulator. I'm going to end that with uh, God. What's it called? Timer. Uh, what the hell is it called? Set B counter. There we go. Uh, okay, so hang on, gonna end that with oh one. No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, gonna basically, I want to check the bottom bit to see if it matches the bottom bit of this. So I've just taken the bottom bit of the byte so that will give me either one or zero right and i need to check it against the bottom byte of this um which means if i oh my god i can't even my brain isn't working properly at all what the hell is going on with me today my brain is not working Right, it's not working. This is not good. All right, so I'm going to exclusive or it with that. So if this is zero and this is one, then it's going to give me uh, one. If this is zero and this is zero, it's going to give me zero. But I I can't even think straight. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this and just hope it works. I'm I'm really not enjoying. I'm going to stop complaining. I'm just going to get on with it. All right. Okay. So, for instance, the player in range stuff, we can skip completely. So, we could say, okay, here we're going to say, uh, There we go. And then all of this as well can be done. Uh, so I'm going to put another. I oh know this is set frame, do walk animation. So do that here. And then copy that chunk of code again from up here to come there we go all right let's give that a try i i'm pretty sure this is fucked up anyway but oh, fuck yeah i'll try it so that's what we're trying to beat we're trying to get something a bit smaller than that uh even if it's just like every other frame Ah, uh, didn't distance too far. Fine. Okay. Ah, uh, I'm gonna do fucking basic things tonight. Yeah, let's get off this screen. Oh, you can see it doing it there. There you go. You see how it's it's doing half the amount sometimes. So that has kind of worked. So let's try it on the next screen there. Definitely need to sort that out. 
But let's see how the jelly bean behaves now. So let's just watch the jelly bean as it comes in. We should hopefully see that the cyan area is flickering between two sizes. Uh, and actually the smaller size is, is quite small indeed. So this could be an option. We just need to check on the, the thing to make sure it is moving correctly. Seems to be. Um, it does look a little bit slow though. Maybe I need to change its update a little bit. But again, the update could be, that could be changed just by changing its update speed. Um, but it does, it seems to be getting confused now and again. So let's just stand here. Shit, even standing there is going to be difficult though. So. Right, it should run towards me hopefully still. She does. Okay, cool. That's actually not bad. Okay, I think that's the method we're going to go for actually. Just keep an eye on it for glitching. So it gets to the edge, turns properly, comes onto this side of the screen. Everything's looking good. Yeah, this this looks all right. So what I'm doing is I'm using the, the sprite number or the enemy uh, index number to decide whether or not it's going to do it. So it will do odd numbers on one frame. Uh, when I say do it, I mean uh, the full update. It's going to do odd numbers on one frame. It's going to do even numbers on the other frame. Uh, now, I could do this as a kind of global thing, but I think what I might do is just apply it to certain enemies, um, and hopefully it will reduce the time. I mean, obviously it's not doing now because we're still doing everything on every, every enemy. Um, but let's have a go at trying to strip some of the black space out of here. And we'll come back to doing this on the next stream, I think. It looks like the purple ones, whatever they are, could do with, with adjusting as well. Um, but it, it's it's already feeling a little bit better. Uh, Amiga Max is an ass twat that sucks donkey dick. Are you allowed to say that? You are, and I will read it out. And just in case anybody didn't hear that, uh, Amiga Max is an ass twat that sucks donkey dick. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard he blows his grandma as well. So, you know, blows his grandma. Yeah, because his grandma is, is a dude now as well. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you were around earlier, CBMEs, but we did have a little bit of a, a little bit of a chat about that. So, um, So you might you might want to rewind a little bit at some point and and have a have a look through. I I was ranting a little bit about various things and we got onto or I got onto the topic of that. Uh, was building the coffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I I I think he deserves it all. I mean, he's he's a complete yeah. Ass hat is the perfect word. He is an ass hat. Chat equals a major rant. Yeah, it was a major rant. <laughs> I still am feeling quite ranty, but I'm going to get through this wine uh, and then I think I'm going to call it a night. I think I've got an idea for this then. I think the alternating frames is going to work for us. Um, I may just have to kind of make some slight changes to some of the behaviors to make this work. But let's see if I can figure out why there is such a big gap between the um, between the enemies. Let's see if we can close that gap down and make the, the black kind of disappear a little bit more um so in enemies here we this should be doing the uh update enemies where is it but maybe uh we're doing play a collision between them so maybe this could possibly be possibly be the problem here uh we're doing a, a play a collision check after every behavior um and that in turn is doing all of this um now can we skip any of this i guess we can't really but this is happening on every single sprite so Okay, I'm gonna. I think the first thing to do is 
is stagger those updates. Um, that will go a long way, I think, to helping us. And we can even stagger it further if we find that it's still, um, if it's still too slow, we can stagger it further. We could even make it dynamic as well. So we could even make it that um, different levels have different levels of staggering, different updates. So uh, I shouldn't. I don't know what his deal was. I should know better. Yeah, it was. It was just. Oh my god. The thing is, I think he said something, and um, he got called out on it, and he realised he was wrong. But rather than admit he was wrong, like the child he was and is, um, he just dug himself a deeper and deeper hole, and you can't win against stubborn people like that. You can't win against, uh, and it's not even winning against them. You can't, you can't reason with them. You can't tell them anything. Could you compute how far ahead until it would collide and then count down each frame? Um, potentially, um, it would be better to pre calc that though. And the problem is, is because they come out of random pipes, that means there would have to be at least one frame somewhere when they hit the ground, possibly, uh, where it looked ahead for the next collision. Now, that doesn't sound too bad. A single frame of hit could be all right. Uh, but it would be one hell of a one hell of a logical change. So. Yeah, so the this the this kind of staggered update thing is kind of similar to doing um uh network interpolation on games like Quake. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, rather than rather than try and do the physics calculations, in our case the collision, um every frame, what we'll do is we'll do it every kind of tenth frame or something, and we'll fill in the gaps between there. We know we know where something was and what direction it was going in and at what speed. So we, we should know roughly where it will be in 10 frames, which is uh, why you got um, rubber banding. That's what rubber banding is. So if your, um, your network would not update every frame, your network would update every 10 frames or something like that. So what Quake would do, and games still do it now to a certain extent, is they will interplate the gaps. So they will say, okay, the last network update said you were there and you were moving in this direction, and they'll try and fill in the gap. But then what happens is when you get lag, um, that gap suddenly becomes really big. So if you were walking towards a wall and then you get lag, what the, what the enemy will see um, in older games, anyway, they have correction for it in newer games. What the enemy will see is you walk through the wall because the, the, the prediction, the network prediction will say, well, he was walking in that direction and we haven't had any updates from him yet, so we're just going to keep him walking in that direction. And then the rubber banding happens when the new network request comes in, and all of a sudden you snap back to where you actually are. Um, you could pre-compute at level load the ends of every platform, and the enemies could look up from there. Um, yeah. I... Oh, I know what this is. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, it was on uh, the second Commodore format power tape. I really liked this game. It was good. You had to fill a newspaper in, and each newspaper, each newspaper segment was a different uh, game. So it was a it was a newspaper ran by pigs. Um, it was it was not a bad go. It was. I mean, the games themselves were great, but it was something for free. It wasn't bad at all. Definitely played worse. So I, I think what I'm going to do, uh, for a to answer the questions uh, that you're you're talking about there is, I'm going to, um, I'm going to apply the staggered updates because I think that's a sensible thing to do anyway. There's no need to do all this collision every single frame. I'm going to stagger them out a little bit. Um, possibly, possibly even stagger the collision updates for the players as well. So you only have 
collision updates, alternate frames when there's two players. Um, and then after that, we can look at the performance and see if we need to do more. Um, yeah, I think I think that's probably the right the right solution. All right, I'm gonna stop any more. Uh, sit. Oh my god. What is it with me today? I can't do anything correct. I'm just my brain is just not working at all. Fucking hell. Uh, I seem to have lost a link on my on my thing. I don't know where it's gone. Wait, why have I got fucking Chrome open? What the hell? Oops. Oh, my window shut down then. Fuck's sake. Why have I been using Chrome all night? I don't know why that's come about. Ah, I'm trying to find... I know it was a follow. I'm just trying to I'm trying to find the freaking windows. Uh, thank you for the follow, Nagy out, and welcome to the stream, dude. That's why all my freaking things look weird. I was in the wrong browser, completely the wrong browser. Why was I in Chrome? I don't understand why I've been in Chrome all night. Maybe that's why I've been angry. Because of Chrome. Right, I've turned the, turned the SID requests off now because uh, I am going to call it a night soon. Um, why the fuck do they have Chrome open? That's weird. Uh, Parasol Stars, yes. Uh, to be honest, for work, I tend to use uh, Chrome Canary only, really. And then other than that, I'll use Brave. So I use Brave for my normal browsing. But when I need to do, um, when I need to actually dig into what's going on and i'll use chrome canary for that um uh, firefox i can't stand i can't I, I can't get on with it at all i used to like it but it's just it's i don't know it just doesn't feel right anymore uh, okay so i'm gonna let these these tunes play out and then i'm gonna call it a night guys so I've had enough. <laughs> I've I've tried. I'm sorry. I've tried. Uh, I just can't. I can't. Can't go on anymore. Uh, so yeah, I I think if we stagger these, uh, no, that's it. That's all I've got. That's all the wine I've got now. I have some odd things with Chrome not working, especially on mobile browsers where other browsers on my PC load and work fine. When you say mobile browsing, what phone are you using? Because if you're using if you're using Chrome on an Apple device, you're not using Chrome. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And it's definitely Chrome. Mobile Chrome on iOS is Safari, yeah. Oh, Samsung. No, no. The Samsung devices are shit anyway. So I've got the uh, Note 10 Plus, and I, I can't stand this device. I, I think it's absolutely awful. Um, I, I regret getting it. I really do regret getting it. I got it because it had 5G on it, and I couldn't get a decent 5G phone anywhere else. But I no, never again. Never again will I get a Samsung. I've had two Samsungs six or seven years apart and i hated both of them i don't know why i thought it was going to be any different um i i just can't stand it it's horrible uh pixel was good i'm not sure what the new one the pixel 4 is like and i think the pixel 5 is due out soon um I kind of liked the Xperia, but the Xperia came with a lot of bloatware on it as well. Um, 
I do like the the Xiaomi phones and the Huawei phones, but their cameras aren't quite as good. Not that I really care about the camera that much, but um, I'm just sick of paying. I mean, this was nine hundred pounds or something. It was a lot of money, and it's shit. I hate it. Um, I I think next time I'm just gonna spend half of that, get a kind of mid range Huawei or a mid mid range uh, Xiaomi phone. I I have to say that the the Chinese phones are as good as if not better than most most of the phones at the moment um you just have to deal with the fact that they're probably being spied on all the time but uh i got nothing to hide i don't care um uh, yeah the nexus 5 was pretty good actually i think i had a 5 as well or 5p or whatever it was or 6p was it 6p i had got me yeah yeah, the Xiaomi's are really good phones. Uh, my my uh, girlfriend's got a Xiaomi, and it's really really good. But the only thing with the Xiaomi is is the camera isn't as good. It's not terrible, but it's just not as good as as one of these um, one of these like flagship phones. So, why did the Clyde still give the pony less or what? Uh, how you spell that Xiaomi uh, it's uh, Warlock posted it above yeah there you go they're really good phones and they're, they're like half of the price of of the uh, kind of equivalent spec phone the, the only thing is, is you're going to get um, you're going to get a lot less uh, uh, clarity on the camera uh, but other than that, the, the specs are, are pretty much so. Oh, and the screens are usually a bit lower res as well. Uh, but if you don't care about having like a 4K screen or a quad HD screen, then and you can get by on a 1080p screen, which let's be honest, your phone is six inches across. 1080p is absolutely fucking fine. If you think it's not, then there's something wrong with you. Um, yeah, if you can if you can deal with that, then they're incredibly good phones uh, for the value. So. Um, I also like the Huawei phone so as well. Huawei have got some good phones. So they've started bumping their prices up a lot as well. Yeah, the MFC, the Duo, yeah. All right, I'm going to let this play out and then I'm going to call it a night, guys. So let me have a look if we can raid. Duke Donuts is on. Let's go and raid Duke. Sounds good. Let's queue that up. Let's see playing. Gates of Eternity or Gate of Eternity. A PS2 game, I think. Yeah, PS2. Yeah, let's raid Duke. Yeah, apologies we didn't get an awful lot done tonight, but... um. Not not bad, I I think. I, I just I, I've been a bit ragey tonight, so I apologize for anybody if I've pissed anybody off tonight. I'm sorry if I've upset anybody, I'm sorry. Um I'll be back to my normal self soon. I might take a break on Tuesday, maybe. Uh what's Hayes saying? Uh since all phones are going to one thousand or some moving, it's time to go back to yeah, yeah, exactly. You may as well, right? Um you may as well. Uh, as I say, I'm not. I'm not going to spend nine hundred quid on a phone again. No way. I'm so disappointed. It's just not worth it at all. All right. Cheers, guys. Um, I might be on on Tuesday. I might not. Um, if I get my graphics card, I won't. If I get my graphics card, I'll probably be doing that. I may do. Um, I may do uh, a, a PC gaming stream on Tuesday if that's the case. Uh, I'm not holding my breath though, so I probably will be doing Z80. But if not, then that's what I'll be doing. Okay. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you next week sometime. Bye.